Trying to keep it real instead of what you usually get from these talking heads. It's Grabs of D, we're here to fill the void. Three black fans, different perspective, got to fill your voice. Coming with the podcast, talking majors, indies in between. Yeah, it's all that. And we're down with fight for better fallback. Coming for respect, we connect like a ball bat. No need to double check, these are all facts. You're listening to us talk raps. You're listening to us talk raps. Will Phil then Reg. Yeah, we're Graps of D here to talk raps. Yeah, we're Graps of D here to talk raps. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the debut grand opening to the Graps of D Bistro Bed and Breakfast Bar and Grill Cafe Cafe Lounge on the Water. Well, we offer you the finest of the finer th- things every Saturday at noon Eastern, sometimes on CPT time. If you don't know what I'm quoting, um, I suggest you culture yourself. <laughs> but you know what it is. This is Grapsity. I'm Phil Lindsay. And of course, I am with my co host, Righteous Reg. What's going on, bro? In the building, it's your boy, your favorite rapper, your favorite writer, your favorite podcaster. It's Saturday. It's raining in Oakland. Uh, Hip hop is alive and well, and I feel great, Philip Lindsay. For the last, well, I guess since I started working on my birthday record, hip hop has been, I've thought about nothing but raps, bars, beats. Like that's like I can barely think about wrestling because every moment of my life, I'm like, oh, I could say that or I could do this or I can do this type of thing. (laughs) And then the hip hop gods have blessed me with some beautiful content that we're going to get into. But I'm very excited. But how's your week going so far, Phil? How's everything out in Chicago? Uh, it's going. Uh, it decided to snow last night, and then oh. it was like it was like it like snowed, and then it just disappeared. Like now it's sunny and <laughs> like decent weather. So. Good times. Uh, yeah, definitely referencing Mad Villain off top because Mad Villain he turns twenty years old today. Wow. Debuted on March twenty third, two thousand four, which boy makes me feel old. Um. <sighs> I think um, if you've been listening to this podcast since day one, you know I'm a big Doom guy. And so I feel like that was one of those pivotal albums for him and Mad Lib. It was one of those where he collabed with a producer and they put together magic. It's that one. Of course, the Danger Dude album that he did with uh, Danger Mouse. But Mad Lib and Doom, Mad Villainy is a classic album. Classic. Mm. So many great records on it. If you were an Adult Swim fan, you know most of the records on there because they played a bunch of them during the commercial. Of course, you had records off there on Boondocks as well. It's always rest in peace to absolute legend MF Doom. But man, what an album. Yeah, shout out to Doom. Inspired an uh, entire generation, four or five generations at this point with uh, what he did. 20 years, Philip Lindsay. I cannot believe it. 2004, my 20 year, uh, so 20 year graduation anniversary, uh, high school graduation is coming up this year. They're advertising it on Facebook. And I'm like, dude, leave me alone. <laughs> I don't want any parts of this. You guys are, we're not like, I see all you people here on Facebook or when I'm randomly in Bakersfield, you're there still in the same spot. So, what are we really doing here but i understand so but here in 20 years here in 2004 it's just like dude i don't i can't like what's we're we're just what's crazy. going on here phil crazy but yeah classic classic album so many great records on there all caps uh figaro uh mm-hmm. fancy clown strange ways just so many great records on there of course mad lib it's also a legend at this point you yeah. do some great albums been a part of some great projects but Man, for me, Mad Villainy is just up there. One, it's one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, not just the music. When I think of it, the album cover and everything, just classic, classic album. Man, rest in peace of Doom, man. <sighs> sad, sad, sad times. But rest in peace of some hip hop legends. Um, uh, where are you trying to go with this, Phil? What you think? Where Where are we gonna start this morning? <laughs> uh. So uh, the other night, uh, when music dropped, usually the night music drops, um, 
we got this Metro Boom. <laughs> we got this Metro Boom future album. And uh, we got a surprise Kendrick uh, verse on there. Um, I, I figured something was coming because a lot of people that were in the know would, were tweeting that day, like, look out tonight, man. It's going to be some, some something's going to jump off tonight. Like, people are drawing their, their line in the sand tonight. And so I was like, oh, a lot of cryptic stuff. So, you know, I thought this was coming off of the Sean freestyle where Sean uh, dropped a video of him walking around his crib uh, freestyling and I thought maybe it was the Sean record. And, you know, of course, Sean did drop a record um, mm -hmm. that nobody's talking about, mm -hmm. sadly. And, and the, the Sean record is great. Um, yeah. I, I really like the Sean record a lot. I like the freestyle he dropped in his house as well. Um, but, again, this guy showed up and uh, completely eclipsed Sean's moment, <laughs> similar to the control verse. Uh, um, a lot of other similarities to the control verse as well. Um yeah. But uh, I saw someone say that this felt like uh, Candyman. This felt like uh, similar to, uh, you know, your friends pulling up for something and then your friend hops out the car and then your other homie hops out the car, too. And you didn't even know he was there because yeah. <laughs> he's not shown as a feature artist on mm -hmm. this song. Um, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking for context, uh, like that is the is the record off of the new future Metro Boomin album. And. Kendrick is just Kendrick, man. I like I, I I don't know how else to say it, but everything that we think about Kendrick, everything that his stands put him on his pedestal, a lot of it is well deserved because he's that guy. He's gone on this hiatus and he's not rapped. And every time he he decides to bless us with a verse or bless us with a record, we're all just kind of like, man. I kind of take some more of that, bro. Like <laughs> as much as you can. <laughs> yeah. So I hadn't um, been on the internet that day. I hadn't been on Twitter. I didn't know. I didn't see any of this cryptic talk. And uh, I was watching a TV show or something. I was watching a TV show when it dropped. And so I didn't look at my phone. I was looking at my phone or anything. I get back into my phone and I see text messages from the man himself here, Philip Lindsay, talking about Kendrick. Kendrick did something. I'm like, what is Phil talking about? Like, I don't know what this is. He's like, yeah, Kendrick didn't body these guys. Drake got to get his stuff together. I'm like, what is he talking about? So I go and do like uh, the minimal amount of research to find out what this is like. Future and Kendrick. That's all I connect. So I pull up the 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 album. I'm like, I don't know where it is because on the, like you said, it's a hidden feature. It doesn't say Kendrick's on this song. I no. didn't know what song it was. I just pressed play and I started jamming out. So like that comes on and immediately hip hop, I'm like, yo, who the crunk is three, six mafia. That's the first thing I went to. I'm like, this yeah. sample is insane. Like the beat, the beat drops and it's like, oh my God, what's going on here. And so before I even knew that Kendrick was on this song, I'm just like, this is an insanely dope song. Like the future parts are really dope. And I'm like, wow, this is a great song. I'm jamming out. Then Kendrick comes on and I'm just like, what? Well, like when great hip hop is happening, like I get goosebumps. It's like, it's great. It's like, I can't explain the, 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 the sensation that comes over my body when a great hip hop moment is happening and I'm experiencing it. So it's like happening. He's rapping, he's rapping. And then fuck a big three nigga it's just big me and i'm just like oh my god like i died phil i died i'm dead still yeah, this he, is reincarnated righteous reg right now because in that moment i died yeah metro definitely man metro is metro on the production um future future was getting his shots off as well came off top on the intro to the album getting yeah. shots off which was very interesting to me because if people remember future and drake have a album together i which like that we got, which, well, we got the jump man record jump man jump man jump yeah. man that boy's up to something mm -hmm. um sounds like uh future and uh metro was up to something because um if you know your your drake uh lore at this point um metro don't like this dude nope <laughs> like if even if, if you've been following this stuff for the past year or so metro don't like this dude and Wasn't so that, uh the the video of drake by the walk by the pool that like the, they made gifts out of it like isn't he talking about metro in that little video i think i believe so mm -hmm. um but yeah metro absolutely darren's right metro went crazy on the beat uh but metro don't like this dude i did not know the future had beef with this dude as well because 
he 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 threw some shots on more than one song on the album um but man kendrick kendrick left earth on it during that verse bro like i mean i don't want to overhype this thing but nah man when we talk about restore the feeling for aw this verse in a lot of ways restored the feeling man because i was sitting there like yeah Get to it, man, because you guys have been shooting subs at each other for the longest. I've seen several people posting the Kendrick Cypher verse where he is absolutely throwing shots at Drake in there. Drake <laughs> has been throwing subs at this guy for years at this point. Both of them have been sneak dissing each other for years. So I'm just like, yo, get to it. And so I love I, that BET freestyle. Ha ha. I'm bulletproof. Oh, my God. Kendrick goes insane. High five. Ooh. <laughs> Kendrick is so insane with the reps he did it again phil you talked about it with big Sh i didn't even connect the big sean dots because that was also a thing that is what i had heard that day i listened to the big sean freestyle and he's in the freestyle being like big three they don't mention me blah 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 i'm different i'm over here because we know there's also big sean lore if there's yeah. a, a mount rushmore of this current generation of hip-hop they say drake Kendrick Cole and then Sean wants to be that fourth Sean well, Sean's in there somewhere but I don't know if it's four I don't know uh, if he's that guy though and he want like he wants he so wants to be considered to be, four yeah but like it, his life goal is to be that fourth guy yeah um but yeah uh man a lot to dissect on just the verse <laughs> itself but I was sitting there at first because um those guys got together and then you know Drake just threw some sneak disses on the album. He threw mm -hmm. some sneak disses. He's been throwing sneak disses for a while on the last three albums. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like Cole kind of threw some sneak shots in, but I don't feel like they were the same as Drake's sneak disses. I feel no. like his were on competitive. Like, no, we're if we're the top three, I'm telling you I'm the best. Yes. And really to tell you the truth cole been rapping like he's the best like the Definitely. features he's been putting out the music he's been putting out i still think off season is a great record still listen to that album i love it um but yeah they they've been basically doing this big three thing for a minute if you listen to cole's albums he's like no there is no there's no best like there's the, we're the big three like well we can all share the crown kendrick ain't trying to hit none of that kendrick problem. not trying to share you know? <laughs> he's he not trying to hear that there ain't no big three to him it's big me um that line went crazy a few of the lines went crazy on there the the canine line so, put this man in a pet cemetery um and, that's why and like, it, people have been talking about like uh they're like well he didn't say drake but like he said like he said he he, dog. he, like, he said like he, he, he all but out, said bro. he all but said his name he 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 referenced for all the dogs he referenced things that this guy is taking shots when he when he referenced first person shooter i felt like that was a very clear and obvious jab at the two of them right because there. they did the video they did the record and let you know that um you know we're top two like these are these are two of the best in the game you know bigger than the what and he's just looking around like hey man i wasn't on that so is it really that big um the michael the michael jackson line of course drake just just broke mike jack's record all of this stuff was very pointed. He he all but said his name. And I feel like he in this in this rap in a lot of ways was like, yo, I seen it. I seen the subs for a long time. Enough. I'm throwing my card on the table. I'm flipping that joint over. Listen, enough. Rapper shut the fuck up, bro. Like yeah. enough. <laughs> that's it. It's time. This is it. But yeah, it did feel like that's why there's been a lot of big three talk and people have immediately went to numbers, of course, like you Drake, blah 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 right he got him he's number he's the guy no. you can't beat him in numbers but none of none of the big three phil have done what kendrick done and that's shut down and shift the entire culture of hip-hop with yes. one verse drake hasn't done that and j cole hasn't done that kendrick has done that twice at this point where the whole game is like oh my god what is he doing we have to do something about this and that's kind of what separates kendrick and also if we're talking like they start talking numbers and albums, guaranteed classics, Kendrick has guaranteed like undebatable he has, classics. He has at least he has at least two. I would say at maybe three. Two. Yeah. Like, I would like, say at, at, at most at least three. City are like guaranteed 
uh, classics, you know, and I don't think either one of the other two have guaranteed we all universally agree because we talk about Drake has debate all yeah. the time. And we just they, talked they have, about J. Cole a couple weeks ago. They have debatable classics, but he has like absolutely to pimp a butterfly. It's a classic album. I would mm -hmm. say that Good Kid, Mad City is also a classic album. Yes. Um, I also would say that he has classic moments uh, before that, like even on Section 80, just Man, Rick and Mortis, ADHD. There's Come just on. too many records that he dropped before that that are just big moments. Um, yeah, and I feel like in that verse, bro, this is a moment. This is, uh, I don't know if I would say it's as big as the control verse moment, mm -hmm. but it's definitely, he is drawing his line and saying like, listen, I'm the best. And if either of them two dudes that just dropped that record and told you they were the best feel some way about it, you got to rap. And yeah. I feel like not just that, he caught this guy a bum. Clearly <laughs> caught this guy a bum multiple times in this verse. Yes. Yes. Uh, you can't, and this is this is what I I text you guys in the group chat. You can't, dog. You cannot spend the summer defending this album on IG. You can't throw shots at, at Joe Budden, anybody yep. else that criticized the album on IG. You can't throw a little sneak disses at Meg and all these other people and ignore this first, bro. You got to respond. You can't. You can't, dog. You got to respond to that, dog. Yeah, this isn't one of those like, oh, whatever. I didn't hear it, maybe. Maybe he wasn't talking no. about me. No, he's talking about you, dog. And you, just like Phil said, you've been fighting everybody you fighting interviewers you fighting podcasters bloggers everybody bro getting in the you, ring with somebody you, that's trying to get in the ring with you you got time to respond to all this other stuff with the cutesy ig captions and all that now nah, you got to respond to that verse bro get in the booth big dog is it time to get in the booth it's uh, time. <laughs> this verse is just i don't know if it's as big as the control verse just because like, not. the entire hip-hop game was like we're gonna get this guy like everybody started rapping on him but as far as impact i think this might be a bigger impact because he's like no the biggest rappers in the game i'll get in the ring with them right now like what's up like if that's what we're doing you guys want to talk ball let's like let's ball and that like that represents something even bigger because when he did control he was just like everybody in the game i don't care who you are i'll take you out this it was like it's like these two guys this they is, got on a record this is talking crazy and i if we want to talk crazy i'm talking crazy this was very very pointed at drake at cole and man uh it's very interesting because of course cole is in album mode i'd be very surprised if cole did not respond in some way on the album as well um but yeah, Drake, listen, man, you have been trying to get this dude out of bed in certain ways for a long time. He has been off. He made his his uh his uh very introspective album with uh with uh Mr. Morale Big Stepper. Mm -hmm. He's he's let you know that he's trying to be a dad and he's doing a therapy thing. No, 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 no. He got out of that mode for this verse, bro. You have to respond to this, man. There's no way you cannot respond to this. Uh, it just looks real funny in the light if you never respond. If you come back with the subs, bro, it's over come for back that. With I don't. One of them cutesy, nice R and B jams, nah, bro. Nah, nah, we don't want nah. that. If we you come, if you come back with the subs or like IG caption or whatever, you can't, you can't keep mentioning this dude no more. It's over. <laughs> he he's called you to the table at this point. So if he don't respond, it's it's a wrap. No, I don't want to hear no more of the stick talk and all the rest of this no more. It, I really don't want to hear that from him. I anyway. don't want to hear it in general. Why are you saying but that? But I, I don't want to hear no more of that if you have no smoke for this guy, bro. Like he, no, he, he called you to the square, bro. Get in the booth. <laughs> said, get in the booth. Get in the booth. Do you got raps? I know you got raps because I've heard a bunch of them. You went number one with these raps. Well, let's see what it is. I think Cole will respond. Cole is like, it doesn't. I feel like on both sides for Kendrick and Cole, they, theirs doesn't feel personal. It's just like there's this dead competition. Like you yeah. think you're the best, I'm the best. Like Kendrick and Cole, Kendrick and Drake is different. They have some. It's, it's, it's different. Been a long time, kind of building, bubbling, kind of back thing. But the Kendrick and Drake is, or uh, Drake and Cole are just like we are two nah. rappers who want to be the best, and I want to be number one. And there's been this talk. I think I'm sure Kendrick has been hearing everything that people have been saying about Cole for the last year. Cole's on. Yes destroying every feature that he's a part of he's uh uh 
consider a lot of people are saying he's the best rapper in the world and they're very excited about his album coming out and kendrick has been sitting back like you guys have been saying this talking acting all okay this. cool i'm still over here y'all forgot did y'all forget and you can't forget that's kendrick he's so there's been a lot there's so much to dissect in this but people have been saying that I've seen a lot of people saying that verse is what it's just a nah. shock value. And I'm like, where do you like, or like mm -hmm. even that, that bar of fuck the big three, it's just big me. It's like, Oh, what's that simple. I'm like, this is what hip hop battles are all about. There's no joke. Leave all the technicals. We know what Kendrick can do. We know he can rhyme. He can syllable. He can multi, he could do everything in the world. It ain't about that. It's about dog me and you, and I'm talking about you, and I'm talking about you to your face. It's not about anything complicated. It's about the most basic, the beginning form of hip hop. Me and a beat, and I'm talking about this guy. Everybody just have been trying to make it so complicated. A lot of Drake fans, I get it. Like you, you're no. gonna spin it. I mean, oh. look, there is a there's something to be said. I think about people that are like, you got to get out here and rap because um, Cole been out here rapping. He a he lot. has not been he has not been away from the booth this dude is in the booth every time he get a chance yeah. so but i i do think once you put that bat signal out there with the first person shooter record you had to know this was coming because mm -hmm. y'all made a statement with that not just that you 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 think you're one and two or one a and one b but you made this record and you steady referencing big three and the third guy that is arguably number one it's not on that record. So you had to know he was coming with this. You, it, there was no way that you thought he was going to be like, cool record. I like that. No, no. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, you can look at it like, man, this looks like some funny business. He went and got Cole and made it clear like, yeah, yeah, look, we're the Spider-Man meme. We're pointing at each other. And in the meantime, Cole is on that record. Like, nah, I'm not trying to be one A and one B. I'm trying to eat your lunch, bro. And mm -hmm. then at the same time, Drake is like, nah, man, we're, we're cool. We're friends. And, Kendrick is a far like nah, bro. Drake has that energy too, where you know, like he's always it's, trying to be smiles, and you know, like you know what's behind mad that. Mad passive, aggr passive aggressive energy, bro. Yeah, mad passive aggressive. And again, I think that that's part of what Kendrick is seeing here. Like, nah, you keep playing with me, bro. Stop it. <laughs> Stop playing with me because I will get on this verse. And if you want it to be like that, then it's like that. That's what that's what I kind of feel what was the best about this verse because it wasn't like a full on you're dead. It was a stop playing with me verse. It was like, yo, bro, yes. I hear it. I see it. I'm tired of y'all. I will do this if you want to do this. It was like, here it is, dude. I'm laying it out. Cross this line and we'll go for it. Yeah. Very exciting. I was like, yeah, so good. get to it, man. Get mm. to it. I don't want to hear none of the other like theatrics of what this is about. This, this beef has been going on long enough that I feel like if you follow it back and see what it's about eh, whatever i don't really care what started it at this point just get to it man get to the verses get to it man because uh it's probably it's uh, too many layers at this point to really break it down like i'm sure it started over something dumb but now it's like and then this happened and then this happened and then he did this yeah. and then he did this like now it's like uh, yeah hell of things have happened i mean even just this the layers to this because again i didn't know future had a problem with this dude mm -mm. but i know i knew metro Boomin did bro Name of the album, We Don't Trust You. And Metro's <laughs> tag is, if Metro don't trust you, I'm going to shoot you. Oh, man. And name an album, We Don't Trust You. Mm -hmm. Bro. <laughs> and the album's full of shooting. <laughs> Pretty good. And again, Metro destroyed the production. He's like going insane. But yeah, I wonder like what was the process where they like, we're making this album and we're throwing shots. And like, we know like, bro, are you trying to get down to Kendrick or works Kendrick like, Yo, these niggas throwing shots. How could I let them know without doing something super official that I see them? Yeah. Uh Drake has made a lot of enemies. I have to assume that uh I gotta assume Rocky not feeling some of the jabs he's been throwing his way. Oh, either, no way. There's no there, way. There, there, could be. there were some random shots at Rocky on For All the Dogs. There's some random shots at Rihanna as well on there. Uh, so there's several rappers that I'm sure are sitting in a win. Least of not. I'm sure Push is somewhere rubbing his hands together like, hmm. <laughs> now it's cool. It's, it's cool. It's cool to step out on that ledge now because, uh, you know. 
Do you feel like there's I feel like there's more on the against Drake side uh than there are for him? Like who's gonna go to bat for him? Like I don't even because Cole wasn't even really going to bat for him on the record. He just kind of happened to be I feel like Cole I, I feel like Cole would, but I also feel like Cole because Cole's a strange case because Cole wants to make you feel like, oh, it's not competition. We can all share this crown, but you're very much, you very much went into that first person shooter record trying to assert yourself as the best. You were not trying to look like you were beneath Drake at all on that record. This whole uh, run that Cole's been on for the last year has been, it's friendly, but also I'm better than all of you guys. Like I'll get on a record. We can yeah, fun, of, but I'm... I mean, he's kind of making a good state case here. The, like, the <laughs> bars have definitely proved it. Like, he has a he has a really thick resume of this is what I'm what I'm saying is true in these raps. So it's like I do believe you, but it's like is the, is the out? We talked about it before. Does the album can this next Cole album? Does it mean? Does it have to be what people are saying it is? Because I feel like he's already established himself. Like we talk about him in the big three and he deserves to be here but he does he have to have that definitive album the one that we say because people are looking at this one way different than any other of of his releases i feel like it kind of has to be because he's hyped it up for so long i feel like it has to deliver and it's not just that like we've seen we've seen drake in wartime we've seen him respond to meek and we've seen him respond to push definitely lost that battle but duppy was a good record um duppy was a good record until we got the response um uh but yeah we haven't seen cole actually like respond to anybody and actually have, like a straight like, up this is a diss record yeah so it's a little bit different with him but yeah what an exciting night that just oh, that man. night of just all of the tweets just listening to the music when that first dropped i was like oh yeah oh and uh, i it, forgot about that cole video from earlier this week did you watch that he put out like a mini he put up some music yeah yeah that was really dope too yeah. i'm like yo you guys I, I, all right. I think that album's gonna be good too man i definitely looking it's forward to it is, is dope because i the the off season was a really dope record. His last three records have been my favorite Cole record, so I'm sure this one will be even better. That's why when people are like, "This has to be that," I'm like, "Does it, man?" I'm like, "He's gonna do it." Like we're all here. Yeah, so. I, I don't I don't really subscribe to the belief that he doesn't have a classic album. I feel like yeah. he has at least one or two. Yeah, um, I'd give I him feel two. like, but yeah, man, how exciting! I'm sure people are like, "Man, get get, get to the wrestling," but bro. <laughs> I don't think people, I don't think y'all understand. They don't understand. I was, when I was listening to this and texting in our group chat, and I'm just like, what the fuck? These niggas sleep? Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was watching the show, and it's funny because I, I get onto my phone, and you're in the, the text group chat and the, 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 the Twitter group chat saying, like, going crazy. Like, Phil's like, yo, what's going on? This is how I'm like, all right, let me get to this. And now I finally get to it. I'm like, oh, I see. Yeah, they don't understand, Phil, like, these moments of just, like, the entire hip hop world is focused on this one thing and everybody has comments and everybody's focused in Kendrick does that man. And his albums like to pimple butterfly is like, I still think we don't appreciate how great that album is. I think in like 20 years we'll be like, that's you sure. I, I, it gets, I, it's, it's gotten all accolades. It's been hyped up as one as probably the best rap album of this era it i is. think it gets it's i think it gets enough, it gets all the flowers bro which i think is crazy i'm just california bias i think is what it is i'm like yeah it gets its flowers i don't know kendrick he deserves it it's all worth it but yeah this is just exciting for hip-hop i hope that something like drake if drake responds that'll make this really really worth it and i hope it's something i hope it's not a mean fucking response you know how drake will do he'll try to do like a like the, the the um one of them meek freestyles was like get to the shits bro why are you why are you doing this but yeah not nah, not nah, see it's not Su- it's not snooze palooza it's Lollapalooza, bro that's the name of the concept <laughs> not snooze palooza it's, it's Lollapalooza, bro i, I think uh rory's joint was do was do say palooza and it's not no, there's no there's no snooze palooza bro nope <laughs> haven't haven't seen it and haven't been there, i don't it? know what you're talking about did you see that video of rory sliding down the slide with his daughter yeah <laughs> Bruh, when he when he came out of that joint and it was the first of all the way the slide was rocking when he started going down it was funny in itself but when he came out and it hit the uh ho- holler back girl i was like yo i'm dead 
I had saw that video before I saw him and Maul talking about it on the show, and I didn't know it was Roy. I was like, who's this guy sliding down? And then when I put it together, I was like, what in the hell is going on here, man? I love it. Let's get into a few of the rap uh, super chats before we move forward, since everybody's bored. But you know what this is, Grapsity, baby. Uh, Eloquent says, why is modern rap, modern rap beef always throwing subliminals? People never name names no more. I need a video package to follow these beefs. LMAO. Oh, no. <laughs> Not the video packages. Uh, no, I, I mean, I feel you. But I feel like uh, because this is the generation that came right after Hove and Hove was kind of master of subliminals. Because, uh, I mean, we just we just see that video that's going around a lot about him throwing a sub in imaginary play, players. And mm -hmm. so I think some people yeah, are we're taking, discovering Jay-Z subs like 20 years later. <laughs> yeah, he's got tons of subs out there. But so I think I think that's part of it. But um i also feel like man we're in this era where everybody wants to be like that's my mans that's my guy like everybody ain't your mans bro everybody um, ain't your mans yeah but yeah no i i but this was pretty pointed eloquent like he didn't outright say drake's name but he said everything but saying his name at this point first person shooter of the dogs like who, who yeah. else could he be talking about at this point uh jay stone says forget drake i'm ready for cole to body kendrick this is a moment to officially solidify him as the guy if Kendrick, if Drake, I mean, if Cole comes out like guns a blazing and sets Kendrick on fire, he might, he, he might. Get he, that top he's spot. out, he's out of here if he does. But it just sounds wild to think of anybody body and Kendrick. I, I just, just can't. See I don't know if I see that happening, bro. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Busby says, with the tear in my eye, this is the greatest moment of my life. I love hip hop. <laughs> Great, biggest Drake hater in the world. He, he, up. Had, he had to been, he had to been like rolling on the ground with his feet in the air, kicking his feet up. Like this guy be like, this had to be the happiest moment of his life. <laughs> Busby definitely did a backflip that night. Like he was letting all the tweets out. Like he, that was the most exciting. Legit. This is a real super chat, you guys. He's not kidding. Like that night. That was the greatest thing that Busby ever sees. We know he's a huge Kendrick fan and a gigantic Drake hater. So he, this was just this, a great moment for him. This was him uh, for me watching Brian getting dipped by uh, Steph in that game. <laughs> Steph ripped, ripped Brian. I was out by seat. I was like, yo. <laughs> yo. <laughs> if you didn't see this, it was, it was hilarious, bro. He, he, first of all, he got the pick on Steph. So he got the matchup he won on Steph. You, your big six, eight, 200 plus pound <laughs> self on Steph. And you think you're about to just bowl right through him. He tried to, he tried to push off through that arm out there and Steph ripped him. I was like, yo. <laughs> Again, this, uh, this moment, this Steph and uh, LeBron moment was exactly like the Kendrick moment. Cause when I got to my phone, Phil was in every group chat that we have <laughs> going <laughs> off about this. <laughs> I was like, yo, <laughs> no, no, this was really funny, man. I died laughing at it. I've watched it several times at this point. <laughs> so funny. Will Chisholm says, I'm still mad. J. Cole and Kendrick dick teased the album together like 10 years ago. Yeah, they they got a they got a battle just for that, for doing that to us. <laughs> that that album is never happening, buddy. <laughs> really? Now, I don't <laughs> it had. I don't even know if there ever really was potential. Like for one month, we were like, "Yeah," but like it's been teased. I never was like, "It's gonna come." I was always that's like, that's mm. yeah, that's in the same category as the Gambino Chance record that we're never getting. It's never happening. <laughs> Damn, I feel like there's some songs in some vault somewhere, but like yeah. they're just we, gone. Yeah, we're never gonna get that right album. I don't think. Uh, Caleb Cassidy says, "Bit behind," but that Kendrick verse is a flame, double flame emoji. Um, Sal Cruz says all these Drake stands acting like the push a T diss track doesn't exist. This gonna end up with Drake sitting in the barbershop crying LeBron again. One thousand <laughs> percent. You can't. You can't, dog. You cannot. That's how he deals with this, Phil. Dog. He's like LeBron. Let's no. go talk about it. Like no, let's you not. You can. Talk about you it. cannot run over to Bron's uh, barbershop show and <laughs> no, dog. No. If I you if I trying. if I get on Twitter in a few days and he's like talking to Elliot or or. No. Come on, don't stop it. <laughs> uh, man. Deontay Soigne says, Kendrick really said, I ain't here to celebrate. I'm here to elevate. He's on his Osprey. He said, uh, he killy goat and Drake is dilly throat. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting cut. The, the last uh, um, super chat brought up an in interesting thing for me because this new influx of rappers doing their layouts on these like Twitch streamers 
platforms. Yeah. Like I saw that sexy red is going. I don't even know who Aiden Rock. I don't even know who this person is, but I see a lot of people going to be featured on this thing, and I'm like, what's going on here? Uh, yeah, I was watching Bomani talk about uh the ball players uh becoming podcasters and media guys. Ah, uh, yeah. And what does yeah. that mean? What does that mean for the infrastructure of of just like the for game. media folks and, and what does that mean for media in general and he made a lot of really good points that i hadn't really considered um but the the biggest thing with media right now in all sectors whether it be hip-hop basketball and it's even happening in wrestling now is that um at one point uh people that do podcasts people that have like a big outlet the thing was getting access, right? Mm -hmm. And get, you getting you you getting access to be the person that gives them somewhere to sit down and tell their story. Right now, it's harder to get that because they don't feel like they have to give you their access because they have so many ways to put it out themselves. Yeah. And that has completely changed the game. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the same thing that's happening with the Twitch guys. Like, no, I don't have to go sit down with Elliot no more. I can go and put out the information I want with Kai and that. And, and I have to get grilled by Elliot and I, ask all these yeah, crazy I don't, questions. I don't have to answer questions that I want want mm -hmm. to. I can put out the information I want. I don't have to worry about putting out the information and then you editorializing it the way you want. Mm -hmm. It's coming directly from me. And that has definitely changed a lot of things. Not not just like I said in, in basketball or football but also in rap in a big way. And I feel like yeah. it's changing things in wrestling in, a, in that way as well. It is. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing of like the uh, old vets in, in wrestling are starting to get podcasts and like the 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 people are more comfortable talking to somebody like in that space. Like people are way more comfortable talking to Nori because he was there. People are way more yeah. comfortable talking in situations like this because he's there. The funny thing about the streaming thing is when you're talking and I just thought about it, like that's live right there. They can't edit it. Like they could be, it, it's kind of a gift and a curse because sometimes you can say the bad things, but for the most part, you could just be like, it's you can authentic still control to yourself it. as you want. Yeah. And in, in a controlled space. You, and just, yeah get your Cause, shit off pretty much cause that was the same thing brian did jj's uh podcast this week as well right. but it's so different when mm -hmm. brian don't have to go to espn to do that interview he can go and talk to draymond he could go and talk to certain other people i also laughed very hard at that this week as well that That's draymond nice. has been the podcast guy <laughs> and Dray draymond has been making it clear that he's a brian guy brian's his friend and he went and did jj's podcast first now that felt For, like that felt that, like them. I, I felt that before. I, I felt Draymond. Like I was like, people were laughing at Draymond. I was like, no, nah, I feel him though. <laughs> but what made it so funny is uh, before he even said that he was salty, I was like, oh, Draymond got to be hot about this. And then when he said he was salty, I was like, I knew it because uh, and, and Kevin Mace made the perfect analogy of like, no, when you when he went over there and signed with Clutch, he thought he was getting the whole verse, and then he yep. looked around and somebody else got the whole verse first. Like, yo. <laughs> Wait a minute, what am I doing on Rock Nation if I'm not getting a whole first? <laughs> I thought this was a guarantee whole verse. Like, sign here, next step, whole verse. Nope, it doesn't work like that. No. Hope gonna take his verse to somebody not of the culture. <laughs> it's a cold game, man. Damn. It's Draymond's crazy. pretty much Draymond talks about LeBron more than he talks about his own team on his podcast. <laughs> and imagine waking up and being like, wait, he went on a podcast with who? He over there talking to JJ like what? JJ cool, but what? What? Yeah, it's, it's funny, funny stuff, man. Though, man, I'm not a, uh, I'm not mad at kind of people creating their own spaces to release and and kind of create their own narratives. But I don't want the we as media people we can't that can't get lost. Like we still got to exist out here too. <laughs> um, well, that's why I said what well, I I think Bo Money was very insightful about it because he was basically saying that. There's only so much time in the day. There's only so much room to listen to so much. And there's so yeah. much out there now. And and so I feel like not just is the threshold for what's good um, kind of getting muddied a little bit, but man, it's like, you know, what is garbage now? Because it's like a lot of these a lot of these uh, ball players or people that are in the space, their people or their friends aren't going to tell them that the podcast is bad. It's going to do numbers just because it's them. Yeah. And so the game is just, just different man it's, just, it's different man <laughs> the game is crazy should we talk about some wrestling uh sure uh i'm sure we've got we've got humper chats and uh 
wrestling related super chats definitely i'll get into the uh wrestling related uh, super chats while you pull up the humpers yeah let me refresh and make sure that we well let me make sure we don't have any humper chats on the drake stuff before we move oh, forward true. i don't want to i don't want to skip those Da, 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 da. doesn't look like we do but of course as always send us your super chats if you want to send us your humper chats you can send it to us at humperchats.com slash fightful uh yeah let's get it oh we got one more on the drake thing uh carlos gandula says drake about to hop on mind the game to talk about how kendrick took the beef too far <laughs> but you know he ain't really went nowhere with it yet yeah Mm, 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 mm. Um, Shot Kick 29 says, I'm not normally the it's a work guy, but everything going on with Jack Perry just screams work to me. Uh, yeah, the Jack Perry stuff was very interesting. Uh, I, you know, I expected the Jack stuff to become news again once Jack got back outside and started wrestling again. Um, I did not think that this was going to turn into what it turned into. Um, I thought when we got the first report about it, that was kind of be the, like the standalone thing. I didn't know that was going to turn into multiple corrections. Um, but Phil, what's you know, going on with Jack Perry? Why is this? Why does this drama <laughs> keep surrounding him? What's up? You know why? You know why at I this point? Exactly because <laughs> it, he he got he got in the midst of. Uh, some drama with the most hot topic in wrestling at this point, CM yes, Punk. Sir. It's never going to be uh, not a point where people don't cover him heavily, and there isn't going to be a ton of CM Punk headlines. And mm -hmm. so once you get con linked with him in some way, you're now in the middle of it. So out of the Jack being in the New Japan Cup stuff, uh, Dave reported on it, and Dave initially reported that uh, <laughs> Tony was still upset with Jack, and that's why he hasn't been back to AEW yet. Mm -hmm. And he also put on there that uh, he's being unfairly. Well, let me not say unfairly because that wasn't Dave's words. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to misquote him. Don't mix him up. Yeah. I don't want to uh, misquote him. But he's he's being made to blame for the CM Punk stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I first saw that, um, oh, he also said that of course that Jack is not fired. He's still signed, mm -hmm. which my initial reaction to it was like of course he's not fired i don't think yeah. he's gonna just be out of his contract i didn't think he was just gonna pop up on a new japan show and tear his contract in half and that meant he was gone no. so you know i initially got my jokes off with it but of course now when whenever you bring up the topic of cm punk it's going to be a very divisive conversation and yeah. so now also when you bring up jack it's going to be divisive as well and so twitter did what it did with that quote and it turned into a very divisive oh well was Jack really wrong or uh, did, did did he not realize that Punk was going to get into it with someone anyway? He was going to end up gone anyway. Is that really Jack's fault? Blah, blah, blah. Relitigating the stuff from All In, which is getting to a point where it's almost a year from now. Yeah. <laughs> We're almost up to a year, Bark. So I had no real interest in re-discussing that stuff. Um, but the interesting thing that I thought about it right away with people that were like, nah, no way. There's no way that Tony's upset with him. There's no way he would be still upset with him. I don't know if I believe that he blames him for the CM Punk stuff, but I don't think it's that hard to believe that Tony would be still upset with him because um, that was a pretty embarrassing moment for AEW as a company. Your biggest show of the year. You've biggest got show this, of all time. Yeah, your biggest show, uh, not just of the year, but mm -hmm. biggest show in the history of the company. Yeah. And you've got this petty stuff going on right before the show starts that <laughs> put this black eye on, on the show from then right on. Right before the show, Phil, the biggest yes. show of all time, and they're fighting. <laughs> yeah, so you've got this like news story that's now forever attached to your first Wembley show. And it was embarrassing. It was just, it was embarrassing the way it happened. It, it was embarrassing that you had to go that route and fire punk and make a very public uh, reaction to it in his hometown. It's embarrassing that you didn't have CM Punk the next weekend at all in all out in Chicago. Um, I think everything about it, he probably was like, no, this, 
everything about this is embarrassing. Yeah. He probably was very frustrated with both of them. So I could see him not being happy with Jack. Um, I don't think it's to the degree that he blames him, but I could also see him being like, nah, I'm not happy about playing a part. Now you're not all to blame, but like you no. were there. Yeah, but this was this was completely avoidable. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, of course, then that turned into uh <laughs> the response from Dave was then Dave uh said that Jack had spoken to Tony after it happened and he tried to apologize, uh, but then he wasn't brought back and part of the reason he was brought wasn't brought back is because he was upset with him still. And so <laughs> we then get Brian's uh, quote from directly from Jack uh, that came out a few days ago. Uh, well, not even a few days ago, less than 24 hours ago. Mm -hmm. um, and Jack, you know, said himself, he disputed the claim that he apologized and asked for forgiveness for this. Um, he also, <laughs> uh, he also, I didn't say that. <laughs> He also disputes the claim that, that they were in conversation. He says he, he didn't hear from Tony Khan for two months following all in. Uh, he said that he never texted to say he was sorry, told Khan's lawyer he would not initiate first contact. And uh, they finally set, up, set aside a in-person meeting for, before full gear in Los Angeles. And they discussed plans to bring him back in December. Uh, those plans fell through when Punk debuted at Survivor Series. Uh, there was also an interesting piece in there where per Jack was saying that uh, he wanted to show up at Wrestle Kingdom, which I was just like, oh man, we that kind of could have been hard. If he debuted yeah. at Wrestle Kingdom, that would have been a great moment for him. Uh, but I guess they were unable to figure out the logistics for that. And Rocky ended up working it out and we got the debut where he debuted in his current run with New Japan. Uh, there are a lot of very interesting things about Jack's rebuttal. Um, I don't know if I buy all of it, um, but whenever people are like, it's a work, my initial thought is, all right, if it's a work, what does this do for Jack Perry yeah. as a wrestler, as a character? Does this help him? I don't think that it does. I don't think that continuing to drudge up this stuff helps him. I don't think that, I, I don't, I, I don't think that even the scapegoat stuff and the part of the reason why I think the scapegoat stuff is doesn't have a good, a long shelf life is that people just want to move on, man. People just yeah. want to move on. If you're going to be on TV, um, great. But I just don't want to continue to go back and forth about this stuff with punk and punk is gone. He's no longer with the company. So why are we still talking about it? Move on. And, and um, being attached to what people consider dirt sheets and like drama and stuff. And you're still talking and rebut. Like, even if you're trying to rebut, like, why are you over there in that drama? No. Like, why, why are we even, we're still talking about all in. We're still talking about this. And yeah. like, you're perpetuating it essentially by being like, no, this is all the stuff that actually happened. You know what I mean? It like, like you're saying, as a character and as a, a wrestler, and that, I don't know if it makes them look like like I'm not like yeah, get him, Jack. After this, no, I don't. I don't think it necessarily makes anybody look great in this. Even if you're like, this is going to get heat on Jack. I don't. I just don't think that that works. We're still and using I, CM Punk for our heat. He's somewhere else, dude. <laughs> I, I just think you got to move on from that stuff. And even if you're just trying to get heat off of. You know, you being this anti-authority guy, that can work. But I just think in the way that all of this stuff came out, I don't fully believe that all of this is a work. Right. Um, I think some of it may be Jack trying to work it in, like in, into an angle Become like it work. is a work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I would not be surprised if two things are true: that a Tony was still upset with him, mm -hmm. and b. Uh, Tony had no input on what he's doing with New Japan. Because I also saw that right at first when people first started responding to the, the reports about Jack. Well, he's in New Japan. So how much is he really getting punished? I don't think mm -hmm. that that means that Tony has any kind of input in this or that, you know, it was his call to put him in House of Torture or anything like yeah, that. Uh, like, I, I just don't know if that like, I believe Let's send him that. over there. Like, look, I'm sending you guys Jack Perry and I want you to bury him. Like, that's not how. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong. I, I've 
I think the longer that, that he's been over there, he's fit seamlessly in with House of Torture. I've enjoyed his uh, New Japan run so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just... So that I, aspect is kind of working, essentially. Yeah, that aspect of it is working, but mm-hmm. the last thing I want to do is continue to debate about who was right or wrong in this <laughs> Jack and CM Punk stuff. It's over. It's over. Punk is, Punk is gone. Jack is still here. Like we got a resolution care, already. We don't need to debate it's it. Exactly. We we resolved. have the we have the resolution. Um continuing to belabor that point, I just don't care, man. It's so funny that uh this whole Jack stuff is coming out and then Drew McIntyre has been on this thing with CM Punk talking about uh Cry Me a River playing in the background and CM Punk's real glass. It's like these are <laughs> so Jack's going through this tournament and then the other side they're using it as an angle. Yeah, uh, and I mean, look, it's punk, and it's an easy way to make headlines. It's an easy way to get a reaction. We just saw Shota Umino do the promo this week, Thank and he you. also dropped the It's Clobbering Time in there. Um, so, I mean, now that he's a, he, he's linked to punk in some ways, it's probably not going to go away anytime soon, but I just don't understand why people would think that we're keeping this as a big talking point as a work. I just don't see the... I don't see the benefit in that. I just don't see it. No, it doesn't work. Now, this story kind of, Jack turning this into uh, work because we've talked about a little bit on this podcast of Jack joining the EVPs and Okada up there. This kind of plays to that story a little bit? Yeah. I I mean, look, I if creating the angle for Jack to come back, um, I think some of this stuff helps it. Uh, mm-hmm. Because even the stuff in here, there where he's saying he asked for his release and he was denied, um, yeah, I feel like that helps that angle in some ways. Um, and like I, the young bus could be like, we were the ones that denied it actually because we want you to join us. I mean, even if that's not the case, I think that part of it is fine, and I would not be surprised if that bit of it is is a work. Mm-hmm. But yeah, people that just think like a hundred percent all of this is a work, I don't mm-hmm. buy that. Mm -mm. i don't buy that because i just don't think that it helps him i don't think that knowing that tony was upset with him helps him as a character i love that the it's kind of funny of uh melter coming out and being like he's still under contract of like it kind of goes along with that he came and ripped a contract on tv and is that uh make the contract null and void i'm like that's not how contracts work but for melter to be like actually guys he's still with aw don't forget (laughs) like dude we know (laughs) Yeah, uh, yeah. And there, there are bits of this that I think are very funny, man. Um, <laughs> there are bits of this that I think are very, very funny. But I just think people that are just like, no, it's absolutely a work. I don't think that, guys. Yeah, I think that I think that, like I said, parts of this they are working into the angle with the EVP stuff, possibly. But I'm just saying, if I if you put yourself in Tony Khan's shoes, you, this is the biggest show of all time. You got CM Punk out of whatever he was in to bring him back and all that. That's kind of surrounding that. And then Jack Perry kind of plays a part in you having to fire this guy. I'm not going to be OK with it six months later. And by your own words, you haven't uh, apologized. You haven't tried to get in contact with me. Like, what do you think I'm going to be like? All right. What's up, Jack? Hey, nice to see you after all this time. I haven't seen you. No. I'm still going to be upset if that's me, you know? Yeah. And that kind of lends to, cause even the, when the part about him apologizing came out, I was like, okay, well, t- these two things don't really align. If, if he apologized and he felt bad for what happened, he wouldn't be doing a scapegoat thing. Exactly. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Like that just doesn't really make sense. Why mm-hmm. would you have a conversation with your boss about this thing that, uh they're very much trying to not talk about as a company but you're drawing attention to it elsewhere no i don't i don't think that i don't think that lines up they haven't mentioned him at all on AEW tv huh no they as a company don't want to talk about this they want to move on (laughs) that's an interesting aspect to this (laughs) <laughs> this is so funny like i'm saying like is this okay forget about the AEW. do you think this helps jack in new japan like do those do those people that are watching new japan care about this melter stuff no no <laughs> i don't think they do and I, I don't think for the most part that the new japan crowd cares about the cm punk stuff either right exactly that's why I'm like when they when he's doing the skate through th- thing i'm like i don't think these fans care about that i think these fans like jungle boy you know what i mean like they care about jack perry the wrestler they don't care about like the antics but you know trying if you if you wanted to like reinvent yourself essentially and try something new i understand why he's doing the scapegoat thing 
Yeah, and there are aspects of the new character that I think are working for him. Mm-hmm. Scapegoat thing is a little bit too on the nose for me personally. Yeah. But, you know, I've seen people that also like it. So, you know, different strokes for different folks. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. We'll definitely hear a lot more out of this coming in the next few, everything. Um, but I expect to see Jack Perry back in AEW. How about you? No, he's absolutely coming back. Um, yeah. I, I I don't for a second believe that he's never going back to AEW. Right, right. Shenanigans. Uh, you, think, you, to... <laughs> you, th- you think MJF is not going back because his <laughs> his his profile is gone, his merch is gone, guys? <laughs> he blocked out his picture. I don't think he's coming back. That's what that means. That's uh, just just silly stuff. Uh, we're gonna get into some more super chats and move forward. Uh, Van Twin Blade says Mike Outlaw picked up a shoulder injury last show and had to get surgery. The next show on April twenty first has a two p.m. bell time to get pe- people time to get to Dynasty. The Warhouse and divorce match is up now. Yeah, I saw Mike Outlaw got injured and had surgery. Shout out to Mike Outlaw. Speedy recovery and hopefully uh, Glory Pro can benefit off of dynasty being the same day as their show sometimes wrestling fans are super into doing that double header type thing so hope it's all good yeah um chris says was it a mistake for naomi to return to wwe might lower on card then she's lower on the card than when she left and lose every match i can't speak on for her personally if that's a mistake it seems like she wanted to be back over there and if that's what she wanted to do hey more power to her um if it's me personally, I think she should have stayed with TNA a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't know all of the specifics of why she went back. You know, if it's a, if it's a bigger bag and also you don't have to do the separate separate travel schedule with your family, you get to travel with your family and make more money, then who am I to be upset with that? Did you happen to see any of SmackDown? Uh, I, I think the way that they're putting her into the... Uh, damage control storyline is good. Mm-hmm. I think there's interesting aspects to it. Yeah. Um, there's definitely things about it that I don't really care for, but I think at the very least, um, if you're saying that damage control stuff is the biggest storyline for the women, it's possibly the second biggest storyline on SmackDown in general. I think having Naomi in that when she came back is a good sign. Yeah, uh, the match, I watched SmackDown last night, um, reviewing the show with Denise, shout out to Denise. Um, The match with EO last night with Naomi was super fire. They got time, they got time to cook, Mm -hmm. and they had a really fire, like, Joshi-style Japanese match that I liked a lot. Like, if Naomi has continued to be put in spots like that and given time, I think that she'll continue to excel. And uh, being featured, if this is how we get on to a WrestleMania match, like, I'll take it. Like, if she's going to be in some six-way match or, you know, tag team match with damage control, I'm all in. Um, It's still pretty early. I don't want to say, like, it was looking kind of crazy for a week, but she still is featured every single week on SmackDown, even if it's for not that long amount of time, you know? Yeah, I mean, if I'm critical of it, I don't like the idea that you bring her back after she had a world title reign somewhere else and immediately started doing tag team wrestling stuff with her again. Like, that didn't happen. I don't really care for that, but I do think uh, the stuff they're doing with her is at least interesting. I I think I like the most about it is that they are playing up continuity. And you don't see WWE do that, especially when Vince was there. They didn't pay attention to their own continuity. Mm -hmm. I like the idea that... Uh, they're very much pay- playing up the stuff with Naomi before she left. They're not just acting like, oh, well, we just put her back in. And so she's just slotted in as baby face number one or baby <laughs> face number two that is just reacting to these things like she doesn't have history with these people. Um, so I like that part of it. I like the fact that she is playing off the history with Bailey and Asuka. Um, but we'll see. We'll see where it goes with WrestleMania. I can't say that I'm super excited about a tag match, but... Mm. <laughs> There's still some pieces that need to be put together for sure. Like we still don't know. Like Bianca's gonna be a part of it too. That's like unfortunate because like we talked about, she should have that singles match. And then is Jade gonna be a part of it? Like uh, they Bro. announced last week, uh, last night on SmackDown that Jade is officially SmackDown bound and a part of the SmackDown roster. Now, Phil, we are a week out for WrestleMania. They could potentially give her a match like it could like somebody could interrupt her and hey your first match is going to be at wrestlemania but i wouldn't suspect suspect so it feels very much like we're getting a trios match it very feels like jade 
Bianca and Naomi taking our damage control at this point. Mm. Um, but having Jay for seven months and coming the the week before WrestleMania and go taking my talents to SmackDown, like yo, I, I just don't really understand how you hype this woman up when you first sign her for weeks. Um, disappears reappears at royal rumble has a great performance at royal rumble then goes back to where am i going to show up now guys where am i going to be free agent and then you don't answer the question until the week before wrestlemania like you had all of this time to book something for this woman and this is where i, I and that whole time it. phil she was on the smackdown side like the whole time she was yeah. doing the where am i gonna land she was on smackdown every week you guys could have just said this a month ago that she was on smackdown yeah, I that part of it is just it's frustrating. I I don't really understand the Jade stuff, but if at least she gets a match at WrestleMania and she's That's a part of the damage control, there's a saving grace there. But they could have done so much better with this in the time that they've had her, because this isn't like Naomi, where Naomi just came back at Royal Rumble, and so you're trying to figure out how to how to factor her in. You've had her since September. You've had her, You've had her since September, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what uh, uh, watching SmackDown last night and that Naomi and EO match getting so much time to cook. It shows the stark difference between a Dwayne SmackDown and a non Dwayne SmackDown because it flowed a lot different. The women got to cook. A lot of the wrestlers got to, got to cook a lot differently. And the main event angle showed how the rock not being there is a very glaring thing too so very interesting stuff happening on smackdown wrestlemania is now 14 days away phil and i'm just like how yeah. do you feel like what what, what 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 from one to ten what's your wrestlemania excitement level at i'm excited for the show i'm excited for the big matches that they've announced but there's so many other things that i just don't understand why are we two weeks out and bianca still doesn't have a match announced um mm -hmm. And when we talked about it before and the fact that Bianca was on the kickoff show, you featured her heavily on the kickoff show by herself. You didn't feature, feature the two women that had a match already, but you yeah. put her on a kickoff show. And in the, in the time since then, she still don't have a match. <laughs> I, I don't understand that. I don't understand how there's certain yeah, we're people. 14 days out. Just save the match, dude. Why are we like, give us the whole card at this point. But I mean, and in their point, they're like, this thing has been sold out for a long time. You're going to be there regardless. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not saying that you have to give us the whole card, you know, in, in one setting, but I, I think Bianca, the stature you hold Bianca to the fact that she was on the kickoff show, you, you were pubbing up the reality show and we're yeah. two weeks out and she don't have a match like that. Just, <laughs> I don't understand that, man. What's going on? Here? Yeah, the kickoff thing is really confusing because it's like, well, it seems like you guys would have had plans for her back then, knowing that she was going to be a big part of WrestleMania. Why are you acting like she's not a big part of WrestleMania now and she's just like some side character in this damage control and Bailey type feud? It's really weird and interesting, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. I mean, it's going to work out. Like, the, the matches will be announced and everybody will have a great time, but it's just like, I hate that they're just in this, like, you had time. You don't have to be in this crunch time of, like, we got three weeks. What are we doing now? It's like, you should have had this all laid out, and we should this, know. We should all be plattered, laid out for this show at, happening in two weeks. Yeah, and I think that's the part of it that's very strange for me, because it's Bianca, of all people. It's not like this is somebody that you haven't f featured very prevalently on your show and on your pay-per-views. So to have her go from last year having a title match on the card and on her way to set a new record and then a year later she's in a multi-women match mm. huh you you <laughs> you couldn't give her a singles match you couldn't build a story in that time and i'm sure some people will now go well the damage control stuff is a story why though yeah like she she's been in this damage control storyline since 2020. Yeah. She has beat all of these people. The I, I did chuckle last night when Naomi was like, and you need to help too. And I'm like, yeah, but she beat all of these women. Mm -hmm. She beat Bailey in singles matches. She beat EO in singles matches. What more do you want? She beat Asuka at WrestleMania. <laughs> um, what do you mean? She should be done with damage control. I don't really understand why she's still linked to damage control. Mm hmm everybody who's linked to damage control they need a fresh ass start after this pay-per-view they need to get everybody somewhere else yeah 
Um, let's get into some more super chats. Uh, Tony P says that moment with Adam before the match was a WWE worthy moment. One thing I can admit with AEW crowd is that they make spontaneous moments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think the Adam stuff, <laughs> the Adam and Christian stuff was very, very WWE. Uh, and we'll get into that stuff when we get into the rampage and dynamite stuff, but most definitely that was the kind of watching the full SmackDown last night. There's a uh, one. They're still using uh, fake crowd noises. I don't know why. Like you got sold out crowds. It doesn't so make everybody. any sense to me. Like they're gonna just do them, use them forever. And the crowds are now conditioned to react how exactly how they want. But it doesn't make for a good, a great flowing crowd. Like there's fourteen thousand people here. This should be rocking. And like. A lot of the times they're just sitting on their hands. When Naomi and Io were cooking, they were just like, okay, this is cool. They got super hype when like Bianca and came out to make the save. Like they love big superstars, but when like there's just like some great stuff going on, they're not the super most interested. And that's because WWE's conditioned them to be like that. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we got a podcast during the Thunderdome era. It was basically like it's it's done for that. Dude, the, once yeah. they figured out what they can do and and sweeten the crowd noise, then I going back. You're still gonna get the fake crowd noise, man. It's, it's just where I we're at right now. I was the catalyst of it, like the Thunderdome and them being like, "Oh, we could just do all this ourselves. We don't even need these people. They're just like visual representation more than like." sound representation <laughs> audio representation it, it feels like uh that uh scene in ray where ray was out there and the crowd was making too much noise and my man was like turn the lights down and they all got quiet it feels like that happened they were like oh once we figured out we can do that never going back <laughs> once we turn them lights down it's over <laughs> uh miranda cosgrove also known as i carly says the rock buried dave Meltzer. lmo a l m a o marks Shout out to uh, iCarly. Very controversial uh, Nickelodeon <laughs> stuff going on right now, and I hope everything's all good. You haven't seen Quiet on Set, but uh, I, I saw can't. a lot of people talking about it. Um, I do want to watch it, but I, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I, this was another um, Rock is back moment. Rock is really in the wrestling ecosystem mode because when he's out here responding to the sheets, he's responding to Dave. He's he's locked in. Yeah. <laughs> That's what all of this rock run has felt like is locked in. Like he's in these he's, spaces. He's, he's arguing with Dave LaGreca and Dave Meltzer and trolls online and Cody. I'm like, oh no, rock is like the rock. He's back. This is yeah. the this is the 20, the 2024 version of the rock. And it's very interesting. Uh I Carly also says Cody's segment was boring. Cody is a politician. Um, which one are we talking about? The Cody segment for um Raw or the Cody segment from SmackDown? If it's a SmackDown segment, I disagree. Um, there were things in the Raw segment that didn't really work for me. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna get into that SmackDown segment too. Uh, Van Twin Blade also says when Punk gets back, Drew gives him a figurine of a sheep and says it's real glass. Cute audience laughter and Phil looking like, oh, you mother effer. <laughs> Very interesting to see what's going to happen with Punk is back full time. He's been giving us all of the rehab videos. It looks like he he's he's close because he hasn't had a uh, he hasn't had the uh, brace on in some of them. Mm -hmm. He will be here in the city of Chicago on Monday. I will not be at that raw, but he will be here. Phil, you're not pulling up to see Phil. Raw is uh yeah, it's raw. The three hour thing is just, it's always a tough hump for me. And going to raw tapings aren't nearly as fun as going to the pay per view tapings. Yeah. Uh, so I, I won't be there. And, and, and you know, you got to go all the way out to Rosemont. It's not like it's in the city. I don't, I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> Phil don't got the juice like that. Philip Brooks. He can't no, get you out of the house, not, not just for an appearance anymore. If this was uh if this was the build to the Rollins match still that I thought we were getting, I would be going. But it, him going there to just cut a promo and not wrestle WrestleMania, I can watch that promo. Oh damn, this would have been so different if he was gonna be at WrestleMania. That's what I'm saying. If he was wrestling damn. and he was he was he was going out there to cut the promos and do the build to the Rollins match, absolutely, I'd be there. But damn. just him being there to pop some tickets, I'm good. <laughs> They're going to sell out regardless. Uh, yes, of course. Boy says, uh, Reg, make that Mother's Day pod with Mama Nyla happen. Um, if you guys didn't see uh, our interview this week, Mike and I from Indeed interviewed Nyla Rose about her 
participating in the Alpha One show tomorrow, available free on Ethan Page's YouTube. You guys should definitely check that out. But at the towards the end of the pod, Nyla's mom called to get some help on her email or something. Very hilarious. You guys should definitely check it out. It's one of the funniest things that has ever happened uh, on a pod that I've been featured in. Um, but Nyla said we could potentially, Yes Boy's referencing doing a Mother's Day pod with Nyla and her mom, and that's like 70% uh, going to happen. So <laughs> it's, growing, it's growing day by day. It's going to be so funny. I can't wait. But definitely check that out, you guys. Uh, Delayed Grat says, can we admit they botched Jade Cargill's intro? I won't say that they botched it yet, uh, but it has been, it's, it's been very frustrating to watch. I've been trying to be patient with it, but I've grown very impatient with how long they've been so walking this dog, man. And it feels like the way that they are presenting her when she does even get kicked off, it's not going to be like all the time. Like she's going to be a special yeah. attract attraction type thing. And it's like yeah. the dog is going to be walked very slowly for this. The video package they showed last night was cool, but it's a video package I wanted weeks ago. <laughs> and then Deontay Soigne says sky blue shined on rampage spark wrestling stacking a show for mania weekend, April 7th. Tam advertised for uh, advertised for that show, and Utami and Julia are going to Rossi's new promotion. Exciting stuff. Y'all be easy today, boys. Thank you, Deontay. And yes, women's wrestling is insane right now. Like I said, if you guys haven't seen that uh, Naomi and Io match, it was insane. There's a match with Red Velvet and Queen Aminata from Ring of Honor this week for the ring of honor women's television championship tournament that's so fire if you guys just want to see a fire ass match with two black women just going for it that's the one to watch it, well women's wrestling is insane right now mercedes is doing a lot of stuff japanese women's wrestling is incredible um i'm very excited about it yeah i feel like uh women across the board uh shined a lot this week i thought the becky naya match from monday was also very oh good. that was good too yeah uh i thought the the stuff we got from dynamite was was good it, it advanced the story with tony and thunder rosa the the tony promo after was was fucking <laughs> hilarious um and i thought that the street fight was better than the actual dynamite main event to be honest oh I, I don't know if that's not a controversy opinion on the Grapsity show. Cause yeah, agreed. Like by yeah. far it like the women had, it felt just like fresher and fun, like legit. The dynamite main event felt like a WWE style. Like, Oh, there were so many WWE style elements and I don't like, you know, it's edge and Christian essentially. So I'm not yeah. completely mad at it, but it's like, it's an interesting contrast to what we regularly see in dynamite. They're going to need to, if they're going to do stuff like that, they're going to have to have like a Will Ospreay style match on the show also as a palate cleanse. That's just a recommendation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought the women killed it on Rampage. I think yeah. at this point that Willow and Chris Statlander are cemented as like the Street Fighter wrestlers. Yeah. Uh, street Fighter wrestlers. I've been playing <laughs> way too much Street Fighter in the last few weeks. Uh, but yeah, the Street Fight wrestlers, they've been great. I think Willow has come across looking really good in all of these Street Fights. And I thought Sky Blue was kind of the mvp of the street fight on rampage this week oh sky blue has been chomping at the bit to get this match so long she's just like i want hardcore i want all the crazy shit she looked like she was having the most fun uh of anybody in the world there's sometimes when brian danielson's in a match and you're just like man he is getting his ass destroyed but he is having the best time of his life and that's what it was like for <laughs> sky blue like no. Yeah, I know. That was pretty crazy. I know. As I said it, I was like, if I just keep moving on, maybe nobody will, will see it or hear it or listen to it. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, the Sky Blue, yeah, she was incredible in this. They uh, uh, The Code Blue on the announce table, insane. Uh, Willow's, is that rain? Willow's um, DVD through the tables. Just great stuff. I love that when women get kind of those displays of just kind of violence and there should be more um stipulation match they don't all have to just be hardcore brawls like let's get a ladder match let's get this kind of match let's get this other kind of stuff you know yeah man with beer did you come up with that uh sky blue second second city center that's great if if, if you did not come up with that and huh. that's her her new tagline she should run with that because it's great that is pretty good that's all of our super chats appreciate y'all 
uh happened to some humper chats if it ain't somebody need to trademark that aew somebody somebody definitely needs to steal that if uh that's not a real thing because that's a fantastic nickname uh slide all the way down see we got one from tony p he says cry me a river because <laughs> uh drew is uh petty of the week again i thought he was doing basic shit talking until uh he pressed play adam and spike were a close second we ended the father fatherly legacy of his friend of 40 years on the way to second t tnt title win um yeah i don't, I don't know I don't know if you could say anybody else this week, but off the top of my head, yeah, that's probably it's probably, it's, it's probably Drew. Drew Drew's been a the lead vote getter for the the week since Royal Rumble. He's Definitely. been killing it. Um, he Tony P continues. He says Jade on SmackDown was a smart choice since it's going back to USA. Uh, hopefully, they start cooking with her and have her in Mania. Speaking of women cooking, that street fight. I was curious how Julia would be in this match. Uh, for the most part, she did very well, not shying away from tough stuff. I wonder what Mercedes was thinking as she was watching that match. Speaking of Miss Monet, uh, this also reminds me of something someone said and jokingly about Mercedes on Twitter. Uh, he goes on, he says, they said Mercedes will have a, have to bleed to prove she is all elite, but knowing her love for this business, she may do it and have a smile on her face. Uh, Kate with the blood afterwards. Also with Rossi and the old president gone, uh, stardom made has made major changes. Oh uh, yeah. I think a lot of stardom news this week is interesting. Of course, they just finished up the Cinderella tournament. Mm -hmm. Um, Hannon won. I think that that's a good move for the future of the company. She's yep. young. Uh, she's someone you can build on. I think it's reason to be optimistic with her going forward. But of course, they announced the women that will not be back. Uh, Julia, Tommy ha um, Hayashita. Um, there were like two or three other people. I don't have it in mm -hmm. front of me. Probably should have pulled it up first before I said that. But um, yeah, I, I think right away, yeah, Utami is going to be a big miss for them, man. Like, yeah. that's a glaring one for them. Uh, Julia, of course, as well. But I think the fact that they kept Tam and some of the other stars that they've been kind of building along the way is good. But this is going to be something that's going to be a big news story moving forward of who ends up leaving when their contract's up, how this uh, pans out for the next year or so. Cause this is definitely something that's not done just because of this. Uh, appreciate you, Redman. He, he gave us uh, all the women, Sutami, yeah, Mirai, Yuzuki, uh, Mesa Ruka. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Those are all, those are all really notable names. Um, of course, like, you, Utami and, and Julia are the biggest names among them. Uh, but yeah, those are going to be, those are some big gets for Rossi. Um, I don't know. I don't know what this means for my youth future. I don't think that she has been, uh, cemented on staying either way, but man, if he gets Mayu over there, that's huge. That would be giant. Yeah, this is, um, I think it could be good for the Japanese women's wrestling thing. I hope that, I think stardom has, you know, established a really good base and and students and things and they could they, they'll be able to get out of this but it's gonna look pretty grim for a couple months here i think yeah it's gonna take some time um mm -hmm. but we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to see but uh there's plenty of other, other stuff to be excited about i think the fact that uh, they're still going forward and they have some big names announced for the stardom show during wrestlemania weekend yeah um They've managed to keep some wrestlers that still seem very excited about staying with the company. Um, like I said, Han Hayden is a good person to start building behind. She's very young. Um, and it feels like uh, that's somebody that they can mold. But yeah, this all seems like uh, still waiting for it to see how this pans out. Still like tentatively <laughs> optimistic. <laughs> Like it's like, where's Julia gonna go? It, like she's saying she's gonna start over there, potentially. Or rumors are that she's gonna start over there, but go somewhere else afterwards. So, yeah, uh -huh. when she she put that tweet out there saying, um, "Yeah, she's free," I was like, mm. uh, "We'll see." But yeah, uh, 
correct yeah Redman Azumi is saying she's staying Azumi is definitely one of those that has a bright future no matter where she's going she's great mm -hmm. uh, so that's a good one for them to keep I believe Starlight Kid is also staying mm -hmm. those are big ones um, again we'll see, we'll see how this pans out right um, more from Tony P he says and, and <laughs> not as just working with AW uh, the new the new press seems to be letting letting the women loose on the world uh hell they got sparks joshi on a lock for mania weekend along with their own event and could be a seoh not sure what that is uh seo card of honor ah super card of honor there you go mm -hmm. um super card of honor could possibly be on super card of honor uh, i wonder what new changes will be made in the future yeah that's going to be again that's going to be a big talking point moving forward with stardom I don't know what this means for this company. I don't know <laughs> who's still going to be with this company in the next year, what that roster is going to look like this time next year. I don't know. I, and I don't know coming straight out the gate, what, what Rossi's promotion is going to look like, how much of an impact that's going to make. It's a lot to be curious about. Yeah. Especially seeing uh starting representation at AEW this week and, and, knowing that we've been so excited about them and being a part of forbidden door and hopefully those doors are wide open for what's to come later this year it's exciting stuff on that side too so hopefully they'll have some you know american women wrestlers who need to get some training and some excursions that'll go over to japan yeah uh i think it's a good sign based on some of the names that were announced for the american show mm -hmm. having mariah may and willow and so many of those women from AEW attached to it seems like that's a good sign about the partnership and the possibility of starting wrestlers coming over. Also, yep. Mina being on ROH this week, I think mm -hmm. it's a good sign. Yeah, she had a great showing too this week. I like that match a lot. Yeah, uh, Mina's great. Every time her theme music comes on and she comes out, she's like all <laughs> locked in for the dance. She's like hitting all the moves super hard. I'm just like, you know. She, she did nothing. it again for that ROH crowd that isn't the best. I'm like, no, she's still going hard. She don't care who I'm. No, there. she she don't care. She <laughs> she's gonna give you the entire choreography. <laughs> yeah, super exciting. <laughs> From Jason Rev, he says, "Craps, uh, my guys, hope your week went well. Uh, I was at this Wednesday's Dynamite. How did you guys find we sounded in Toronto? Was loud as hell in the building. Thoughts on Big Three so far in AEW? Do you think they have helped the momentum?" Uh, for AEW, uh, I, I I'll get back to that question in a second because we're gonna mm -hmm. get into to the dynamite and rampage stuff. I I want to kind of hit your second question first. Uh, yeah, he says so for uh the observer. So observer has been talking a lot about Jack Perry and then it being disputed by other more reputable sources that charge five dollars a month. Uh, do you think that Dave slash Brian are being worked by Tony slash Jack? Uh, maybe even with the help of certain former Grab City guy. Um, at first I was wondering where you were going with that when you said more reputable, I was more reputable than Observer. Uh, but uh, no, like when we we talked about it, I don't think that this is fully a work. I think that some of this is just information that got out that yeah. wasn't intended to get out. Now I think that that can lead to a work, but I don't think that all of this reads as a work to me yeah i don't think that brian and dave are being worked i don't think anybody's being worked i think like there's elements that look like it and there's elements that are probably yeah. turned into that but it's not what this is yeah and there's it's it it seems pretty clear that there's elements of this that are inaccurate but that doesn't yeah. mean that it's a hundred percent of work either it exactly. could be that there's stuff about this that dave just got wrong easy as that this is so messy. <laughs> Super messy. Uh, we got another from Tony P. Uh, these didn't go in. Uh, oh, I, I guess he assumed. I guess he's saying one of his time for chat didn't go in. These didn't go in there. Uh, maybe late, but uh, I have a friend who prefers WWE. Uh, sees the Osprey for the first time last week. After she seen that promo, she was mad as hell and said, <laughs> how the fuck Triple H fumbled getting him? She was in awe and said he needs to be in, in WWE. I, I think he's where he wants to be. Um, he seems pretty excited about what he's doing in AEW. So I think he's where he wants to be. 
Look, one of Will Ospreay's uh, new spots that he does in one of his matches is a Tiger Driver ninety one where he drops people on his head on their head. He can't do that in WWE. He can't hit the hidden blade like he he can't be Will Ospreay over there. He'll be a completely different wrestler. It's just how it is. Yeah. Uh, last run from D'Lo Diggs. He says, "Sup, Grab Fam." Man, quiet on the set. Ruined my child key, childhood low key. Still got Cartoon Network and PBS Kids for now. Uh, I think for now is the right sentiment. <laughs> there's always stuff that we do not know, man. Somebody behind the scenes that either of those companies could have been wild and we don't know it. But yeah, I think based off of what I've read about Quiet on the Set, it sounds really sad and unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, again, I don't know enough about it. I haven't actually watched the documentary. But yeah, sounds really grim. Yeah, I've like heard a bunch of stuff for years. There's been books, there's been stuff, Manda Binds and all this. So like I know it. I haven't seen the doc and I probably won't just because it's I'm good. But yeah, hopefully everybody in that situation is okay and hopefully things are fine. Speaking of uh things before we move forward, Phil, uh X Men ninety seven dropped, didn't it? It did. You saw that? No, it was great. It was really, really mm. good. I've mm. I've been watching the original series to uh kind of get up to date before i watch it of course i saw the original series all the way through when it aired but yeah that was years ago Long um time. so i i watched i binge watched the entire series um well i don't i didn't watch parts of season five because season <laughs> five is kind of awful um <laughs> but i watched i watched the most of it to get a gist of it excellent show so far just two episodes in really really good stuff um if you're a cyclops fan like i am it was good to see my guy being treated well because we've had to suffer through Cyclops being portrayed poorly in movies and other shows for so long. Butt of the joke. <laughs> yeah. And so seeing him out there using his powers well, being charismatic, and I was like, yeah, this is the Cyclops I've been wanting to see, bro. Uh, and Storm has been firing it. I think all of the characters so far have been represented well. It's cool that they got most of the original voice cast back, the oh, animation. No. The animation is an upgrade. The mm -hmm. action so far has been really, really good. There's a lot of stuff in it. Uh, even when I was rewatching the original series that I didn't catch as a kid because I wasn't reading comics like that. But after reading comics for years and watching it now, I'm just like, oh, this is a cameo. This is that. <laughs> like all these Easter eggs that I caught this time around watching it. And it was the same way with watching X-Men 97. I was like, oh, this is an Easter egg to that. This is that. Mm -hmm. Like the cliffhanger for episode two is so great. Mm -hmm. And if you know where they're going with this, it's plenty of reason to be excited. Um, of course, try to avoid spoilers if you have not seen it yet. I will not spoil anything for you here. But really good show so far. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I've been hearing everybody that was excited about this show off of the trailers and the, the news coming into it. They were all more than satisfied with the first two episodes. Like, everybody's just been so excited. The nostalgia bug has been just taken over. Everybody is just like, we're back to being little kids. I love that feeling, man. That's so cool. Like, all my friends are just so excited about this show and being taken back to when we were in grade school and shit and getting wolverine uh bookmarks for our books like life is different yeah. i'm gonna check it out this weekend because i want to go back to that time too yeah uh disney plus had all of us fucked up because soon as it started they threw up that uh uh skip the intro part i'm like no nobody is skipping this intro bro no, theme song is too fire bro too <laughs> iconic nah bro <laughs> there's some intros that you don't skip bro that's one nah, of them i ain't never skip i am never skipping the intro to x-men <laughs> no uh we have two more super chats before we move forward uh Ferthausen says starks versus the queen for the roh world tv championship who is your pick no problems with either yeah this is uh gonna be a really awesome match really great tournament if you haven't seen any of the ring of honor women's television title tournament some great matches this week specifically with uh starks and mercedes martinez and the queen and red velvet that i described earlier two really great matches starks has been telling a great story with athena she lost that final battle they announced this championship she was like i'm getting this championship no matter what she got to the finals uh, Queen Amanada has been on every AEW program. We all know and love her for the great matches that she's been putting together. But specifically on the Ring of Honor program, she has been insane and MVP. All of her matches are fire. She looks like a veteran. She looks like she wants that championship too. Um, 
I want to say Queen because they that how they the story that they've been telling it feels like they're a big fan of her. I could see her being the first Ring of Honor women's TV champion. Yeah, based off the story they've been telling with uh, Billy since the Athena stuff, I think Billy's gonna win. Um, I want Queen Amanada to win, mm -hmm. but I don't think she's going to. I don't think it's a bad outcome to this match if either one of them win. Yeah. But I, I my gut's kind of saying that Billy Stark's gonna win. Because it's a great story. Young Billy Starks were, you know, being the minion, overcoming Athena stuff and winning that championship is also a really great story. Um, Steph the Rider says something we didn't talk about with uh, WrestleMania and uh, Damage Control stuff. If Damage Control is in a trios match, does that mean the tag titles and the other tag teams aren't on Mania? That's the point I was thinking of, Phil. If they put Damage Control in this Mania match, that means, again, the women's tag titles are just props. I don't think that uh, the tag titles will be defended personally. Um, I think the only way the tag titles will be defended is if we're getting Bianca and either Jade or Bianca and Naomi challenging for the belts. Mm. Did we hear anything more about Asuka this week on her injury? Uh, they, they had taken her off of the live shows, uh, according to that mm -hmm. report. But she was on SmackDown last night and she seemed to be moving well. She did. So hopefully that's a good sign. Hopefully that's a sign that it's not a serious injury. Yeah, hopefully she'll be able to do it. And I, if I, if they make it a tag team match and the belts to get defended, I'd be more into that than the trios uh, match because I just want to see those belts be represented in some way and get some kind of thing. And then yeah. Tyrone Kidd says uh, X Men ninety seven has hurt me just because of hashtag justice for Gambit. <laughs> yeah, Gambit. Uh, Gambit somewhere going through it, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, isn't that his whole ordeal forever? Sort of. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's definitely going through it, man. Just that, yeah, I won't spoil it. So, <laughs> uh, Yeah, that's all of our Super Chats for now. Of course, appreciate y'all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a, a lot of good wrestling during the week. Um, if you are into the New Japan stuff, if you're into stardom, we were fed really well. If you're into AEW stuff, Got a lot of really good AEW content. Uh, the New Japan Cup has been very divisive. <laughs> um, but I think they stuck the landing. Um, they did. I, I think that this could have ended up going really poorly for them. But I think that uh, based on some of the booking decisions, uh, I wasn't thrilled. Brother, but, there were some twists and turns to get to that finish. I tell you. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I I thought I thought the ending was at least good. The quarterfinals yeah. were a mixed bag because um, we still got a lot of House of Torture shenanigans. Um, last time we talked, uh, Jack had lost his match to Sonata, and Sonata had advanced to the semifinals. Um, of course, uh, Hiroki Goto also advanced because um, Finlay had gotten sick or wasn't cleared, so he wasn't able to to wrestle in his match. So he forfeited his match. Um, other than that, we got the remaining members of House of Torture in their quarterfinals matches. The Ren Narita match with Suji. It was, it was fine. I, it was a solid match. Um, I really liked the ending of it more than the actual match itself. I liked the way that it broke down into the brawl after Suji had won and the House of Torture guys all started to try to interfere. And then it immediately went straight into the next match. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that was a good, I think that was a good way to go with it. Cause it was an interesting thing. Cause everybody was still already in ring and Shingo was just like, ring the bell, get me into the next match. Um, <sighs> Shingo was my pick to win. I said that uh, multiple times on this podcast, Shingo did not win his match guys. Yeah, unfortunately. Unfortunately, uh, Shingo uh, had to succumb to more House of Torture shenanigans. Now, to be fair, there was a really funny uh, visual of <laughs> Shingo. It was kind of the same thing that happened in a match that was before it because Suji accidentally hit Red Shoes with the Gene Blaster. And the second Red Shoes went down, all of the House of Torture guys ran into ring. So you got five guys <laughs> running into ring immediately. Soon as the, as soon as the ref bunt happened, all of these guys come running into the ring. Uh, and the same thing happened in Shingo's match where the second uh, Red Shoes went down because he accidentally got hit by that lariat. 
they all came running in there and you have this really funny visual of evil right in front of the cra camera laughing into the camera and you can see in the background all the house of torture guys stomping out shingo and i was just like man leave him alone man get off of him <laughs> get, get off of him <laughs> let him go leave him alone man <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> but it, it it did give us a good visual i did think that all of the stuff that they did with that stuff with the lij members led to good stuff in the semifinals because evil did when he did advance to face suji in the semifinals and this time around all of the house of torture guys tried to come in straight away but to start the match, Suji Kim comes in during his entrance. He dives straight out of the ring and jumps on Evil to start before the match even starts, before they can even ring the bell. And that leads to all of the House of Torture guys coming in and the LIJ guys fighting it out. And eventually Suji gets on the mic and he demands order in Japanese or whatever he says. And then he gets it, gets it. The bell rings. It's a one on one match. And of course, House of Torture guys end up coming back in because they just can't help themselves. Mm -hmm. But. I really like the ending here because evil ended up getting beaten by his own strategy. Uh, the LIJ guys came out and forced the house of torture guys away. And then they all jumped evil. Evil got hit with the, the miss by Bushi and he lost, he lost to Shingo. Sorry, not Shingo, but Suji, Suji moves on to the finals. Um, the visual of how poor Shingo lost as well. <laughs> And not just getting beat down, but it, it felt like they just threw every everything they could at the guy. At one point, he got misted in the face, and then right afterwards, he turns around, and kind of Maru spits whiskey in his face. Then he turns around, and somebody else throws powder in his face. And then he catches the darkness falls, and he loses the match. Um, wasn't happy to see, see Shingo lost, but, it, but of course, at least Shingo helped Suji to win and advance to the finals. So at least we got rid of House of Torture. There was no House of Torture in the finals. Um, mm -hmm. Fair play to Roki Goto, man. He put on, I thought, a great performance in the last two matches. Uh, his match with Sonata was much better than I expected it to be. Um, I thought that was a fun match. I think Sonata, in a lot of ways, has, I won't say redeemed himself from the title um rain because it was very unpopular but you can see that the fans in japan are uh, are really fans for him you can see that they really like him you can see that the more and more the tournament went over on he was winning them over more and more mm -hmm. um i didn't expect him to come back and win but goto getting a win over last year's new japan cup winner was a big moment for him um and he of course moved on to the finals face suji in the finals Really, really good match. Really enjoyed the finals. Um, Suji, of course, won. He is your 2024 New Japan Cup winner. He's going to go on to face Tetsuya Naito at Sakura Genesis during WrestleMania weekend. Very crowded weekend for wrestling. Definitely. I Jeez. believe that show is on the 6th, April 6th. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that morning. But I think all of the implications coming out of this, they did a good job of building stuff here because... Of course, Shingo lost, but Shingo at least is going to get the never open weight title match at Sakura Genesis as well. Mm -hmm. um, you have the, the the stuff with uh, Yo and Show that's going to play out going forward as well, because <laughs> Yo stole Show's belt. He's been running around with it. And so that will be the IWGP junior heavyweight match on that card. You've got lingering stuff with Chase Owens and Kenta as well, because they are your IWGP tag team champions they will face Bishaman at sakura genesis um you've also still have the jack and shota umino stuff going forward mm -hmm. because jack will be facing shota at windy city riot and he's going to be facing him in a tag match at sakura genesis he'll be teaming up with his dad mox to take <laughs> on uh the team of jack and ren narita mm. jack so, and so mox far in the same match huh yeah, so far the card for Sakura Genesis looks excellent. Very excited for that show going forward. Uh, we've also got a 16 match for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title match. It's going to be, uh, let me make sure. I, okay, I got it in front of me. Uh, it's it's going to be Kushida and Kevin Knight taking on uh, Catch-22 to and the champions, the War Dogs, mm -hmm. in a three-way for the tag titles. Um, 
I had forgotten at one point that the War Dogs were champions again <laughs> because they lost the belts to Catch-22 at Wrestle Kingdom. So yep. when I was looking at something, I was like, oh, yeah, they are champions again because they won the belts back a month later. Um, mm. <laughs> but that tag match should be a lot of fun. Always excited to see Kevin Knight back over there in Japan. Definitely. I think that match is going to hit. Um, I think the other match that's remaining, there's like a big multi-man match. Yeah, there's a uh, Doki, Yu Yu Amora, and Sonata taking on the, the United Empire, Caleb Nguyen, uh, Great Khan, and Jeff Cobb. Mm. Uh, did I think? Oh, no, no, there's two more matches. There's also LIJ taking on the War Dogs and uh, Taguchi and El Desperado taking on TMDK. Um, so far, a very strong card. Very excited for all the New Japan stuff that's coming up in April. Sakura Genesis looks good. Very much excited for the Windy City Riot um, mm -hmm. show. But then they've also got uh, the New Japan Strong show in May, which yep. is going to be in your neck of woods. It's going to be in Ont on Ontario. Are you going I'm to that show? There. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be out there. Got me a ticket to that show. Going to pull up May 11th, I think, is the date. Should be pretty fire. Right. Uh very interesting the announcement they put out for that show the iwgp world heavyweight championship will be defended on that card strong open weight championship will also be defended strong tag titles and a strong women's championship mm -hmm. um straight away the fact that they immediately announced that the world title will be on that card lends to my belief that john moxley is going to beat naito at windy city riot uh, just based on the way they booked the strong shows and how it's usually a lot of U.S. stars there as a as yeah. a draw for those crowds, um, which kind of makes me feel bad because Suji is hot coming out of the tournament, mm -hmm. but now I feel like Suji's gonna lose. I feel like he's gonna yeah. lose at Sakura Genesis, and Naito is gonna go on to defend the belt as Windy City Riot, and Mox is probably going to win. Mox has become an IWGP champion. That is pretty well, and would connect a couple of dots as to why the bcc wasn't a part of this tag team tournament huh yeah uh yeah. that would connect of course we we saw uh claudio on collision mm -hmm. last week so i did think straight away i was like wait a minute they're not in a tournament but claudio's having this random one-on-one -on -one match here yep so it seems like the reason they couldn't move forward is because mox is busy and now we know why he's going he's going to be in japan for sakura genesis it's got the match coming up at Windy City Riot, and it sure seems like there's a very high likelihood that he can be your next IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. That's nuts, insane. But yeah, I could definitely see it because, like you said, the the New Japan Strong draw is they try to have top American stars a part of it too to to get people in. And in California, we love Mox, so I'm sure that will hit pretty hard. That's some exciting stuff from New Japan, especially considering. I mean, it wasn't all a big hit, but, you know, to have some kind of buzz, to have some kind of something, especially some big American shows coming up, I think it's a pretty cool sign. Yeah, you just look at how this is being booked. The fact that Mox is going to be on the card for Sakura Genesis, I'm sure he's going to come out there at the end of the show and stare Naito down when he wins. And that's going to lead to the Windy City Riot show, and I'm pretty sure that Mox is probably going to win. Has a strong uh, record of winning world titles in Chicago as well. He does. So. He likes to win championships in Chicago. Uh, so I, I, he could end up being our next IWGP world heavyweight champion. I'd be here for it. I just kind of feel bad for Suji, man. I do think Suji is going to win the big gold at, at some point, but Definitely. it doesn't feel like it's happening this month or next month. No, but he's definitely going to get his moment. And, it, uh, you know, this build up and getting to the match with Naito and then losing is going to be better for a story, you know? Yeah, it's very interesting that we now have two years in a row LIJ guys winning the New Japan Cup and what that did for them. Of course, Sonata went on to win the world heavyweight title, start his own faction. Uh, Suji winning here is also interesting. I don't know what that means moving forward for him. Again, I don't think he's going to win. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does seem like they still have big plans for him. I think the fact that he won the New Japan Cup is a good sign. I think they're probably going to move forward with something with Okada if I had to guess at Forbidden Door because you still have that, th that thread lingering from yep. Okada's last shows. 
there are things to be excited about with new japan there are just so other things that i'm just kind of like why are we doing this why are we doing that um but i guess the <laughs> the kind of silver lining in gray clouds is that i do think the house of torture stuff in the tournament did actually lead to a good story with lij guys at the end boy it took us a long time to get there it was it was a it was painful to get there but i think the ending was at least good yeah, they stuck the landing totally, making Suji the champion or the the winner because that's uh that shows that they have faith in their future and that the House of Torture stuff. That's what I was gonna ask. Do you think looking back on this tournament that people are gonna be like it was too much House of Torture? Was it marred by them? Uh, I I think some people are gonna feel that way, um, and it's very valid criticism. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I do think they stuck the landing. I do think there was stuff that I ended up um enjoying by then and i think that it was it, it was full circle moments there it just took a long time to get there <laughs> a really long time and there are some people that were turned off by by the shenanigans but you know it's a working process for new japan a lot happened to them in a very short amount of time so it's a recovery thing but they're gonna have to step it up i think for sure yeah uh but I, I enjoyed the last few weeks of it. There were definitely stuff towards the end of the tournament where I was like, oh my God, what are we doing here? <laughs> I, I still don't understand also why Chase Owens and Kenta are tag team champions. Uh, if this just leads to Bishaman beating them and taking the belts off of them, cool. But then it also kind of feels like, what was the point of all of that? Every time I hear the name Chase Owens, that just <laughs> grown. Grown, grown, grown. Uh, Irene C says, uh, someone in AEW needs to take Osprey aside and explain to him the lame ecosystem of a anti AEW trolls. He should ignore. He retweeted chessboard man trying to take a joke, but he doesn't deserve attention. Maybe trying to make a joke. I didn't see that. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't chessboard man. I don't. I, I wouldn't. Know. Oh, ch oh, cheese board man. I, oh, cheese I, board man. I, yeah, I did say chessboard. Cheese board man. Um, I don't know him. I seen I seen some stuff on the timeline a few days ago, and I just you know my take is always the same. I just stop engaging this guy, man. Exactly, and I saw that too about his dumbass tweets, and I'm like, just don't, don't, don't engage. It's fine. That's it. That's it. And then Dex Baker says, Mox holding the butterfly belt and not the V4 is a problem. <laughs> well, everybody I, keeps talking about bringing the last belt back every time they do a promo. Yeah, it's, it's the baby face thing to do at this point to come out and say, I want the G4 belt because that's a way to get people on your side. But I think we all have to accept this at this point that that's, that's the, belt. the belt. They're not yeah. going to bring back the G4. It's it's over. Yeah. It's Divergent 4, sorry. It's not coming back. Just, yeah, like that's it. You guys let it go. Like, spend some time. Just accept that this is your maker and this is your belt. Uh, yeah, that's our super chats. Do we have any more humpies? Let me check don't think that we do mm -hmm. refresh 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 uh we don't at the moment uh, okay. of course if you want to send us humper chats as, as always humperchats.com slash fightful uh we are going to hit a word from our sponsors then we're going to get into some aw talk and some cody and roman talk yeah what's up you guys sean ross sap fightful here to tell you about bet online ag the highest credit card acceptance industry-wide, 25-plus year track record, safe and secure online environments, payouts in minutes, the fastest in the industry. You can bet big with their high limits and rebet functionality, the earliest line so odds open before the competition, the industry's best bonuses on every qualifying deposit, and we're talking on everything. Wrestling, they got it. MMA, they got it. Boxing, they got it. But hey, you know what? I know we're fightful. We don't just live for that. Football, basketball, baseball, hockey, racing, esports, anything you can think of. Not only that, this is exclusively where Fightful gets our lines from. If you hear us talking about lines on a prediction show or on our, our post shows, it is always from Bet Online AG. Please bet responsibly and only bet what you can. BetOnline.ag. Bet online. Do you be making bets, Phil? Oh, you do be making bets. I do. I haven't bet anything recently, but you know, bet responsibly as always, guys. 
if you do want to bet, betonline.ag is your way to go. Straight uh, up. AW Collision last week was fire, man. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like we come in here often and Collision is always good for at least two or three strong matches. And, man, the opening match this week. I think we all knew when it was announced it was going to be incredible. But what... It all. It also feels like what year are we in that this match is all, <laughs> even possible? Uh, because this match isn't supposed to be possible. The two. No. These are two guys that we thought at one point would never wrestle again. Yeah. And not just are are they wrestling again? They're not wrestling in the company that you would expect them to wrestle in. Right. And they're wrestling each other. Um. I mean, it, it's, it's Brian as well, so mm. it's no surprise that this was a heater, but. Man, Brian Danielson versus Katsuyura Shibata. Mm. Absolutely fire, man. Uh, Brian has a, at this point, resume of just collision matches. Yeah. <laughs> that are just <laughs> incredible. Not just his entire catalog with AEW. We, when you just look at the span of his matches with AEW in general, tons of bankers. But just the collision matches alone. He got a lot of heat on collision. Man. He got some insane heat. And they keep doing these. It's like they're not even dream matches. They're impossible matches. It's like this match wasn't supposed You're not supposed to be in the ring with Shibata, who got his brain taken out of his damn head. And they told you to never get into a damn wrestling ring again or you might die. And you guys are both in here beating the absolute shit out of each other. We are so lucky. Yeah, that match was everything like... We were also excited when they announced it, and then for it to be exactly that was awesome. Brian's been in this, like, there's no tricks. They don't have to do anything crazy. He just gets in there. He tries to rip the guy's arm off, and the other guy tries to do the same thing. It's basic. Two guys just beating the shit out of each other, wrestling supremacy. And Brian, since they announced that he's going to retire or whatever he's doing, has been even better than he used to be. Like, this guy's is just as good or as better than when he was in his prime and like he's about to retire and he could go on for five more years just doing matches like this it's really insane and shibata has been the journey for him in wrestling period but in aew of just kind of being like we all know how badass this guy is and he just comes in to have these matches where he's shibata it's so good that was a perfect way to start the show and just like a a feel good match. It felt like, cause like you said, Phil, this ain't supposed to happen. We're not supposed to be seeing these two guys wrestling. No, we are definitely not, but this was great. Uh, mm. I think Brian starting off right away with the technical wrestling and he kind of dominated. He, he at least controlled the match from the beginning of the match with the technical stuff. But then when Shibata had enough and he started going with the strikes, he started dominating, man. He was lighting, he was lighting Brian up at one point. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> relax. It was um, a moment where uh, somebody had tweeted before the match when they both go to crisscross, crisscross applesauce and start slapping each other. That's going to be the greatest moment of, of all time. It happened, and I knew it was going to happen, and it was still as great as I could imagine. Just the whole match of Shibata being like, Man, bring it on. I that shit, that shit wasn't nothing. Give me another one. Oh, that shit was also nothing. Give me another one. Like the whole time of like just forcing Brian to come forward and Brian being like, there's nothing I could do to stop this guy. Like he's gonna try to kill me. Shibata just being that robotic, like, there's nothing that you can do, nothing that that, that I've seen from you that's gonna stop me from winning this match. But Brian, I love the finish of like counter 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 till brian eventually gets the win that's kind of how a lot of his uh recent matches have been and i think it's a really great story to tell because a lot of people call brian the greatest technical wrestler of all time but he's been in some moments and situations with people that feel like they're better than him in the current current day and he has to use different means to defeat them it's just like great storytelling yeah really really fun match um a really big match for i mean Big show for Infantry. I think Infantry had a good night. Uh, Trish taking on Julia for the TBS title. Mm-hmm. Solid match. Then the Infantry upset House of Black they did. to advance in the AEW World Tag Team Championship Tournament. Um, I kind of thought fig- about that match layout. Uh, I thought that uh, the Infantry was going to get more offense in because I expected them to win. 
Yeah, um, just same. based on the stuff that they had done on TV the week before that, they got the big video package on Rampage, and then they had the segment with FDR. So I, f- I felt like straight away that was building to them facing each other in the next round. Um, so I wasn't surprised that they won, but I was very surprised that they kind of got beat up for, not even kind of, they got beat up for this not entire kind of match. <laughs> House of Black beat down on these guys yeah. for the entire match. Uh, the ending came when Mark Briscoe came out and exacted his revenge on House of Black <laughs> and ran off into the into the stands and Infantry took the, took the chance to win out for that. Uh, I don't know how I feel about all of that, but I mm-hmm. think it is really good for the Infantry to have a spot in this tournament. I do think the FDR match is going to be great. Uh, didn't expect that match, though. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was, a, it was an interesting thing. Like, I, going into it, I was like, they, they've set the infantry infantry up to win this, but the way that they won it was it. The, it wasn't the way I would have went by it, but I do understand. They're trying to play up this, like, baby face, underdog, come from behind type. They could win this whole tournament. They're the, the dark horse type thing, but, like, you know, they could have maybe got a few more punches and kicks in in there. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there the whole time, like, I gotta fight back, guys. What's going I'm on? Saying. <laughs> um, uh, but I understand. I understand that they want to give them a spot that highlighted them, but also protect House of Black as well. Um, and I, I, I think this served that purpose. You you needed a convincing way for them to get taken out of the tournament. And I think going back to the Mark Briscoe stuff worked. Um, totally. When did that, uh, a great match, when did that acclaim, was that a claim interview promo on this show? Or was that a different show? That was Dynamite. <sighs> Wasn't it? Was it? Oh, it was Dynamite because he was, was like, Max said he was the greatest wrestler in the world. Sorry, it was Rampage. It was Rampage. It was Rampage yeah. It was, it was, it was in, in, in one of those hours of wrestling that we I'm all saying. Watched. It's Rampage. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, that there was, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. There was some very, there was some very funny stuff in the Rampage stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I think that this was a good way to kick off the tournament. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get FTR versus Infantry next saturday not this yep. saturday because there is no collision tonight because of ncaa basketball basketball you locked in uh final four stuff i haven't really i've, I've caught some games here and there Madness, but i mean i haven't really just... been paying attention as much as i usually do it's mm-hmm. weird that um at this point women's college basketball i feel like it's the biggest talking point out of this, all of this i haven't like i've seen people talk about some of the upsets of course from the men's stuff but i feel like uh, the women's stuff has been a lot more uh, prevalent from a lot of stuff that I'm seeing covered. Yeah, totally. My timeline is filled with women's basketball. Like I, yeah. <laughs> so I rarely see the men's basketball side at this point. Like everything is just like, oh, this woman did this great thing, and this woman did this, and it's awesome to see. And I'm like, that's great because um, even kind of on the, the the WB WB the WNBA tip too. Like they they got a lot more fanfare than they used to. Like women's basketball is growing a lot and rightfully so yeah uh i thought uh kyle o'reilly versus uh brian keith was also oh. excellent very very good match uh very excited again to see kyle o'reilly back uh i keep waiting for that to die down and not keep feeling like this euphoric moment when he comes out like man kyle's really back we uh, we were worried this guy hasn't wrestled in almost two years very worried and so to see him back out there to see him back doing what he does best really really cool to see i thought him and brian had a great match uh, the kyle stuff's not a bit you guys like he there was a moment of like yeah. i'm never going to wrestle again like i heard we all heard rumors about it like it was like hey kyle might not come back here so like seeing him come back and just like it feels great because kyle is such a tremendous wrestler like people don't understand because he's been so long how great this guy was remember right before he left he was about to get into like that territory of the one of the best wrestlers in AEW. like he was locked in and i think he's gonna get right back into that having a match you know me brian keith like out the rip off the gate i'm like yo this is great i love brian keith being put in these situations too of like a uh, big match like Brian Key's going to be in the moment, shining, being exactly who he is. A lot of great counter wrestling in this, a lot of great knees, a lot of great strikes. Like Kyle O'Reilly is back. Uh, the Undisputed Kingdom stuff's going to get a little murky, but you know. 
I, I like what they did with it. I like that Roddy immediately came out and tried to make it about him and Undisputed yeah. Era. And, you know, Kyle was trying to be polite. It seems like they're building to a match with Roddy, which yeah. that sounds like it's going to be a heater. I'm assuming that's going to be the pay-per-view match. Uh, they also tease Shibata as well in the promo afterwards, which... <laughs> Not a match again that I thought we were gonna see. Mm-hmm. Kyle O'Reilly versus Shibata. But man, just the just those two names being linked and in a match just makes me feel good. So yeah. I think that match is gonna hit. Uh wherever they want to give that to us, just please. There were several matches announced within the last week with AEW that I'm just like, <laughs> yes, just give us the match. This is gonna be fire. Um I, I thought uh Garcia versus Lee was also strong. Mm, I I want it to be a bit longer. I I still am kind of a little bit confused by what they're doing with Lee because Lee is such a great talent, and I wish that they would push him more like they push Garcia. But I I guess we have a little bit to be hopeful about because they did the aftermatch promo stuff with uh, Shane Taylor in the the hallway. I like what they did with that character-wise. I hope that's leading to something. Mm Mm-hmm. But I just don't understand what is like what is the hold up with Lee. He's such a good wrestler. Maybe it's just they you can't they can't pick up like a character to stick with. But man, he's so good in the ring. He's such a likable guy. I don't know, man. It doesn't it seems like it shouldn't be this hard to use this guy or book him well. Right. I uh, a really fun match with DG and Lee here. Yeah, I think Lee the thing that's been great about him is he's excelled in all the situations he's been put in cuz he's been put in a number of different situations here in AEW and mm-hmm. I think that he's been great in all of them and he's really great in this Shane Taylor promotions too um getting to showcase exactly who he is new theme the 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 gear it's like 100% Lee that's what I love about it mm-hmm. but I'd like to see a little bit more something substance some yeah like win some story some kind of something to to really establish who Lee is because Lee's one of the best that they got too and I feel like all of his matches are like you kind of described here. It's like it felt given a little bit more time, we'll really understand who Lee is, but he doesn't ever get that opportunity for that extra six or seven minutes that I think he deserves. So hopefully he can start though. Yeah. When they put him in there with the big names, he does well. He had the good CM Punk match. He had a good match with Brian. I yep. really liked his match with Copeland as well. I just want to see more. Like, I, he's one of those guys that I'm hoping coming into the Continental Classic this year that he nah. gets a good run in that tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, that's they, they have something in mind for him. I don't know what they have planned for the pure title as well because you just been injured. But I, I would love to see him hold that belt and get a run with it. Yeah, there he could. Uh, there's some things that they need to be doing in Ring of Honor too because you brought up the the pure championship. A lot of those belts are just aren't being defended. I don't know injuries or whatever. People are in AEW, but yeah, there's some places that like Lee and a number of these guys could fill um, that I hope that they get to. But yeah, duh, uh, I think I love that collision kind of comes becomes that of like they announce a few matches before the show, but like like it's, it seemed like it's all on the fly. I'm like, oh, you're also gonna get this match, and you're also gonna get this match. But they're really fun matches. Like they announced that. Lee and Daniel Garcia match like pretty last minute and it ended yeah. up being like a really fun one. Yeah. I yeah, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed for the majority of this card for the most part. Um uh, collision is, is easy watching. A lot of times it it's is. it's like maybe like three or four bangers mixed in with some squashes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was an interesting choice to end the night with the Copeland promo and not an actual match. But I thought the promo was good. I thought the stuff that they did as a lead in to Dynamite was strong. I don't know if I would have made that the main event, but I mean, but I guess if you weren't going to make that the main event, you were going to, you weren't going to end the night with the tag match. I probably would have switched the, had the Copeland go first and then had Shibata and Brian main. But yeah, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Um, yeah. I don't know whose call that is, but I, that was one of those things where I was like, eh. He's just going to come out and talk. That's going to end the show. <laughs> um, but yeah, we got the, the, the stuff from last week's collision of mm-hmm. him bringing out the, the, the box with Spike in it. This week, he did the promo and he revealed what was actually in the box. And it was cool. It was it, It's very similar to stuff he's done with WWE mm-hmm. during his last run with the company. Uh, him Lights talking, off in the middle of the ring with the chair yeah. and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, talking to the talking to the screen, talking to the camera, mm-hmm. and you know he's at one point talking to the spiked bat. Um, it was cool. 
<laughs> That's how I feel about it too. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you're doing, you're leaning into this, so uh, that character, and like, it's fine. Like, that's kind of all, all of what you've known in your wrestling career. But you know, I'm not mad at it. I still think that his run so far with AEW has been more in my wheelhouse of what I would like to see him do totally. than some of the stuff with WWE towards mm-hmm. the end for him. Because um, I've seen people say, "Is this really better?" And I'm just like, "I think I y'all, think so. I think y'all are are omitting some of the stuff he did in that final run with WWE. Right. Uh, the house, the 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 Judgment Day stuff was not really good. I thought the the AJ feud could have been a lot better. I I didn't really care for. Yeah, a lot both of his those last two run. things you <laughs> described right there are why I didn't really like it. Like the Judgment Day didn't get good until they got that full away from him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought Judgment Day got way better when he was no longer linked to him. <laughs> and that's like, it just, yeah, the spots that he was put in, like, his whole, that last run, I, the greatest wrestling, greatest wrestling match of all time and all that, I was like, I don't like none of this. So, uh, yeah, so I like what he's doing in AEW way more. I hope that this, we're about to get into the match, but I hope that this leads to get these guys away from each other and Copeland starts working with the younger guys again. Yeah, I really liked what he was doing with the Cope Open. I thought yeah. those open challenge matches were mostly good. I thought he had a good match with Garcia. Mm-hmm. He had the good match with Lee. I was enjoying that. Um, yeah, Dante Martin he, match. Yeah, if he just mm-hmm. goes back to doing an open challenge with the TNT title, um, I would be here for that. Yeah, I hope that's what this is leading to and what this is. But if they're like, actually, Christian, we're wrestling again, I'm going to yell at somebody. <laughs> um yeah, that, that's as good of a place if any to get into dynamite slash rampage because mm-hmm. we got both dynamite and rampage on the same night three hours of wrestling uh immediately worries yeah. me um how do you feel, do you feel? Uh, i'm yeah. out i'm sorry i don't no suspense here i don't want it <laughs> i i don't want three hours of wrestling going wednesday i do not yeah no i'm good I, I, uh, I I just can't get into Raw in its three hours. Uh, a lot of times I watch the Hulu version, so I don't have to watch the full three hours. I very rarely watch all three hours of Raw. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's part of the reason why I watch SmackDown way more than I watch Raw, because it's an easier um, viewing experience, because it's just yeah. the two hours. Even even if I don't enjoy everything on SmackDown, it feels like it breezes by most of the time. Totally. Raw often feels like a slog for me, and I just yeah. don't want Dynamite slash rampage to turn into that um and that's what it felt like this week too phil because dynamite flew by and then when they got to rampage it was like all right you guys like i think i think we've had enough <laughs> yeah but I, I i even feel like there was parts of dynamite where i was like uh oh this is uh kind of overstaying this welcome yeah yeah uh, but yeah. i i felt like it was strong for the most part uh starting with the mercedes stuff i enjoyed it uh mercedes is not really known for doing the promo stuff so the promo mm-hmm. stuff is not going to always was. get over well with people i think most people want to see her get to the graps um that's really the appeal of her she's Brother, not like a, people jumped out the window this week it was, it was ryan browse out there buddy we were Man. out the window buddy <laughs> i'm like hey yo already you guys the blooms off the damn rose already dude it's been one week <laughs> i i i think the promo was fine yeah but I was more intrigued about all the story stuff that they did around the promo. Totally. And I, I think that's the stuff that I'm the most optimistic about with the women's division that mm-hmm. you, you don't have two matches on this card for dynamite, but you did have a match where that had story implications going forward. You did have the, the segments, two segments with Mercedes and Statlander and Willow that was clearly building to something. Then you add Julia and Sky Blue in the mix, and then they had to match on Rampage. I think that they, they have a lot of stuff for the women that feels like it's building to something. Because I think mm-hmm. that was one of the biggest issues with the division for a long time, that there wasn't stories. There wasn't there was just matches for a lot of part. Like there wasn't real builds for these, these matches. I feel like that's one of those places where the division has drastically improved. Yeah. That's what, exactly what you're saying. That's what I feel most excited about off this Mercedes thing is that it feels like they're involved in just more segments, just like mm-hmm. things telling stories. It's backstage promos. It's in ring promos. Like it's a mix instead of just the one th- the, here's the one women's segment. It's just a match. Now it's like they're telling stories in all kind of different things. 
I was just like, dude, I don't come to Mercedes for promos. Like I didn't, I wasn't yeah. like Mercedes assigned to AEW. I can't wait to hear what she says. No, I want to see her wrestle all these great women that she's a part of. There's going to, this is how it's going to be there. She wasn't going to come off the rip with a match, but if we continue this for weeks and weeks, Phil, people are going to start to get a little, you know, yeah people are going to be impatient Mm -hmm. but i just don't think you can have it both ways i don't think you can say that the women deserve the chance to be out in front of the crowd and do in in ring promos we've been asking for this for the longest and they did it for two weeks that's all we do (laughs) and they did it for two weeks in a row with mercedes and then people are like well why are you doing the promos with her because (laughs) you have a star that can carry those segments that's why um Um, she's not gonna be like they started the show with her two times for a reason yeah, you open the show with her two weeks in a row. She's doing the in-ring promos. That not just gives her a chance to be in front of the crowd and be on TV, but it also gives you a chance to build stuff with Willow and Statlander that may or may not be as strong as her as a promo or have the same presentation. But being in the mix adds to that. It's the same with bringing yep. Julia into the segments. And I, I get some people are going to feel like it's very much like the WWE way to open the show. But... I still feel like the women need those chances to sink or swim in front of the crowd. Yeah, that's a, I, like I feel, understand that. Like I hate don't start the show with a 20 minute promo. Like I'm not a fan of that at all. But I think the women have to be put into these situations where it isn't just they have a match at nine Eastern or nine, blah, blah, blah. Like they have to be put into a situation where they can open the show and they have backstage promos and they have all this stuff. And specifically, Mercedes has to get her feet wet on this program in different mm-hmm in different ways she's still establishing herself uh what character she is she's still um you know the audience is still learning what she is like is she a heel is she a baby face like what this thing is and like we have to let it develop before we be like oh it's over i can't believe so, I, she went over. there and it's done i'm like yo what do you t- what i've i've had the opposite viewpoint by the way i i think that it's refreshing that this is refreshing. the first time that i've seen them use a women signee the same way that they use any of their other big signees exactly. when adam cole first got there he was opening the show he was opening rampage he was the first person we saw he would be in the in the opening credits but as soon as the show started you're getting it's all about the boom he's in the ring and i if for a minute we were getting brian the same way we haven't seen them do that with women ever and so to come straight out the gate with her not just being in the opening credits opening the show being in commercials being a part of them them putting the video package and building things straight away it you can tell already that they see mercedes versus willow as a money match and again we haven't seen them do that with any woman coming in yet um it was the same way with punk when punk first came in he was opening the shows yep and so to see them do that with a woman it's a i feel like it's a good sign it's like they're building the show around her and that's what they've done for big signings again and that's reassuring for mercedes and the division that like that could give women hope of like, okay, they can invest if there's a reason to invest. Like Mercedes is a reason to invest. So they are going all in. Yeah. It's I want these sink or swim type moments. I want them to be judging Mercedes by being in these different situations because that means she's in the situations. You know what I mean? Yeah. She, she can handle it. She's been on a big stage. She's been in there with like some of the biggest women stars in this industry she can handle it. She's she's yeah. main event at WrestleMania. If you WrestleMania, want anybody <laughs> that can, you could put in those spots and open your show. Mm-hmm. Even even if the promo ain't the best, she can handle it. Right. Um, I I do think that we need to see a match soon, but I I I appreciate what they're doing more than anything. I I think that Willow has gotten a lot out of this. I'm excited to see what they do with Willow moving forward because man, for a minute I was like, man, what are we doing, bro? We was coming um, on this spot every week, being like, what the hell are they doing with Willow? They gave her these big wins and then they didn't give her anything. Some point at this, uh, Mercedes has done an interview where she said that she's cleared. Yes. Um, yeah, and see the other thing with her doing the promos is because i don't think that she's the best promo but i also think that coming out and doing i'm happy to be here yeah. you know i'm i'm gonna make the the division global that stuff's gonna wear thin i think the thing that she's gonna excel at and it's kind of the same thing with punk came in and people are like the promos are lukewarm she needs she needs an opponent she needs the yeah. thing to 
uh, you know, really sink her teeth into. And I, and you she's can just see, coming making general statements at the point. Yeah. She's not being like, I'm going to beat this person. Yeah, I think once we get to the stories, once we get to the feuds, it's going to get better. And you can see that straight away when she had the backstage segment with Willow and she did the, yep. you, you've done enough. I was like, that's, get to it, bro. Like, that's, that's, that's the stuff that's I want to see. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I think starting the show with her cutting the promo, uh, having the lights go out, and then she turned around and Willow had to cheer up. I thought mm -hmm. that was really cool. I think the fact that they played up the Willow stuff with House of Black and made us question, all right, is she being affected by the Miss deal? Could she turn heel? What does this mean? I personally don't think that she's going to. No, um, I like this story. I think they're going to do the old switcheroo where you think that Willow is going to be the one, but Mercedes is really the heel here. Yeah, because... Mercedes isn't going to come in and get booed. She, she no. wasn't going to get booed in Boston, but I think this is leading to her eventually turning heel. Um, and Willow is she, Willow's just in that spot uh, where it feels like her partner always turns on her. Mm -hmm. And I get the feeling that Statlander is going to turn on her. Just right. based on some of the stuff that we saw on Rampage, some of the stuff they've been building to with Stokely, mm -hmm. definitely get the feeling that Willow is not turning here and that either Mercedes is or Statlander is. Stat's getting frustrated as a character and Willow's happy go like it, Essentially what happens with all of Willow's partners is they get annoyed because she's still so optimistic and the ultimate baby face and that could lead to double turn. Like I just want, I love Mercedes as a heel. So I'm just like, yeah, I know she wasn't going to get booed because she can't off rip, but I'm here for heel Mercedes. That's like, that's she's, all I want. she's better as a heel in my opinion. Yeah, um, so I am here for it, but they said, like up a I lot. was saying like, even her promos that she does, she like all of her tendencies are still heel. Cause she's like, I'm better than you. I look better than you. I got more money than you. I'm cooler than you, but I'm happy to like, she's putting it in a, a good package of like, but it's for the company. But like, if you really look down, it's like, oh, she's talking her shit though. Yeah. The first time I noticed it was during the interview with Renee. She said a few things in there. Where I was like, ah, is that something a heel would say? Like right. uh, just some of the, some of the stuff she was saying, I said, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought they built a lot of things coming out of the segment. They set up the stuff with uh, Sky Blue and Julia going for it. Yep. Um, they set up the stuff between, Mercedes and Willow. You also set up a, a kind of a stare down with her and Statlander, which, oh boy, Mercedes versus Statlander sounds fire. That's um, insane. Yeah, that's going to be so good. Like the the way that Stat works and Mercedes. Yeah, that's that's heat. Yeah. Uh, the the first actual match of the show, we got Okada taking on Eddie Kingston for the Continental Unreal. Crown Championship. Um, now nah, Okada pulling up in the Rari. I'm like, nah, this, he's on something else. <laughs> Bro, pulling up in a Ferrari with the suit on. If if you have any worries about the big three, um, as it were, of those guys coming in, they've gotten the presentation for Okada perfect. The presentation man. is on point for Okada. Yeah. It yeah, it's it's perfect. Him mm -hmm. him being smug, him being him him cutting up the the promos backstage, the segments he's doing with the Bucks, it all works. I feel like the EVP stuff was hit or miss but i feel like it's yeah. really come together since okada's come in totally I, th I think the way they do his entrance is great with the the screen coming up and he coming him coming from behind it you getting the money raining down <laughs> excellent every time they've done Fire. it so far yeah um, and i thought this match was great i thought yeah. eddie looked great in it um <laughs> i was laughing at first when he came in with the uh with the big baggy long joints, the big baggy <laughs> pants he had on. Very funny to me for whatever reason. I find very random things funny. This is funny <laughs> to me for some reason. <laughs> the baggy long boys got you good. <laughs> the baggy pants got me, man. I was like, yo, <laughs> they broke us out here wrestling in bell bottoms. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the Okada, the, the match itself was great. Okada yeah. is your new continental champion. Wasn't very surprised by the, the finish to this. I figured he was going to win once you make it a one-on-one -on -one match with no uh, interference. And once they said it was just for that match and not the other three belts, I was like, yeah, Okada probably won it. Mm -hmm. um, him coming straight in and, and winning a title within his first month with the company. Wow. Um, not the world title, but coming straight in and winning a belt. And, and winning a belt is kind of linked to Japanese wrestling as well in a way makes a ton of sense like it honestly makes sense that of course he won the that belt in that style match with those stipulations like there mm -hmm. he's been he's built his life off of that type of shit it makes so much sense 
Yeah, you have you have a wrestler in Eddie Kingston who looks up to Japanese wrestling. He's a big New Japan guy, big All Japan guy, and you're not gonna out. You're not gonna out uh, wrestle that style with the face of Japanese wrestling, buddy. Okada's pretty much either been in the ring with Eddie Kingston's uh, legends, his, like his OGs, or has like beat their ass at some point. Like he knows yeah. everything. I love this match. Like smug Okada. There's nobody better than that. It's just just so like great. you don't deserve to be in this ring with me, no matter who you are. Not not just because Eddie Kingston, Brian Danielson. It could be Kenny Omega. It could be Will Ospreay. Of like, I'm Okada. I'm the baddest motherfucker there is in the land, and you don't deserve to be here. His seeing Okada's drop kick on Dynamite just like just feels good. Just feels right. Some things just feel right, and it's just like seeing him execute his beautiful drop kick against Eddie Kingston for this championship. I'm like, this is. Awesome. I would have had Okada win a belt on his first night out. So this makes a <laughs> lot of sense to me. Like I was like, yeah, of course. Like you gotta get you gotta get Okada some gold immediately. This is Okada. The people need to know that this guy is exactly who we say we are, who we say he is. And I think this championship and the presentation has shown us like, oh, this guy's different than just some Japanese guy that we signed. We signed somebody huge. And I love that they're giving him and showing him exactly showing everybody exactly who Okada is. Yeah. Uh, I also kind of like the the story they're telling here that Brian, after he had to actually give it up to Eddie, he struggled to beat him. He couldn't beat him yeah. in a continental classic. Couldn't beat him at the last pay-per-view. Okada comes straight in <laughs> after beating Brian at Russell kingdom and just beats Eddie Kingston. Like yeah. with no problems, just straight up beats him. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I like that a lot. I like the kind of animosity that you have also with Eddie Kingston. Cut that promo afterwards where he's like, did you see that? They put the promo, the pyro up. No, nah, I'm not going to get into it. And I'm not going to get into it. I thought all of that was really funny. I thought that was great. Uh, but yeah, Okada is your new Continental Crown champion. Champ. Right afterwards, Pat came out to confront him. When I was talking about earlier how they hyped up matches and I was just like, bro, just get it. Give it to me injected into my veins that is one of them i'm assuming that's either going to be a pay-per-view match or something coming up honestly cannot say enough how excited i am that pac is back but man pac versus okada just so, give it to me bro okada and osprey coming into AEW. there was all these we could like go down the list of people we want them to face like who are the dream matches who are the things i'd never even thought about a one-on-one -on -one Okada and Pac match. But when Pac came out, I was like, oh my God. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, you just know you're about to see something you never even could have imagined. I've said on this podcast, I said on Twitter, if Pac, if Pac is given the ball, if he's put in the same positions as Will Ospreay, as Brian Danielson, as Okada, he's just as good, if not better than these guys. Like, that's how tremendous this guy is. This match on this card potentially with Brian and Osprey and a, a Swerve and Samoa Joe and with the things that could happen at Dynasty, this is going to be insane. I can't believe it. <laughs> super, super excited about this match. Um, I, I we we know that Okada can work smaller guys because you know, who should not, who should not be named on the All In card. He worked a very strong match with him. One of my favorite matches from the All In card. Match, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so just thinking about like now Okada versus Pack and kind of having that same kind of setup for a match. Very much excited for that. Um, uh, I think this was a great way to start the show. Not just giving mm -hmm. him the win, but starting with a hot match. Uh, crowd was very much into this. Um, if you were one of those people that felt like, uh. This uh, <laughs> this uh, Mercedes promo, uh, and they got kind of straight to it after that. They so. did, they did. Yeah, I like. I think that uh, Okada establishing Okada on Dynamite right after Mercedes, and then we got Willie coming up later here on the show. Like this show, like the last couple of weeks, there's been a mixed bag of uh, how people have felt about the show's feel because some people have came out of dynamite being like that was very a w uh, very wwe centric like the way that mercedes is presented what christian and cope are doing like there's elements that do feel like that but i think the energy and everything surrounded and everybody else that's kind of present makes it feel good to me i don't know yeah um 
Yeah, we got uh Hook versus Chris Jericho. This uh this match very much wasn't for me. I I am <laughs> funny enough, I I find myself very excited for the 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 Lionheart theme. I think the Lionheart theme is better than Judas. That might be a hot take. That's Man. that's a better theme song than Judas for me. When he mm. comes out, I'm like, nah, this this kind of knocks. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then ding ding ding. And, Hell no. Uh... <laughs> this match, I didn't hate this match though. This is like I thought that what they did was um an interesting way to 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 play off of what Chris Jericho did with Hook's dad, Taz, and ECW and kind of how they structured the match. But is it just me, Phil, or does the Chris Jericho putting over a wrestler not hit the same? When Hook won, I wasn't like, wow, Hook's on his way. I was just like, all right, he'd be Chris Jericho. Um, I just feel like the match itself, when you can tell that that's what he's trying to do. Exactly. It doesn't really hit. It's not it authentic. You're like, oh, we know it, you're trying to put somebody over. It, doesn't it didn't. It somebody. didn't really feel organic. It very much felt like Jericho trying to respond to the criticism of him that he doesn't put people over. Oh, I don't and, put people over. Look, this guy squashed me, and it's like I, I'm, um, I, he, I'm giving this guy all of this offense. He was hitting him with all of the suplexes, and suplexes looked great. Uh, yeah, I thought Hook looked great in the spots that they gave him, but I thought this match also went on a bit too long. It did. Um, and I, I thought that. <sighs> Most of Jericho's again the the, the format of the match for you to be getting dominated for most of this match, and you don't just end it with the clean definitive. You he forced take, you to you tap out or, or tap or out to his finish, dude. As somebody that does yeah. submission for his finish, are used to. Yeah, uh, it, it, you don't just get the clean, um, clean pin, or he just tapped out. You had to do the roll up finish. It just wasn't for me. That's probably why it did also didn't hit as hard as it was because it's like you, the way that you got here, like you put him over, yeah, but not like totally. Like you didn't yeah. take his finish. Like you're the first one not to even take his finish. What are you talking about? It, it just it didn't really hit for me. Um, I I think the Joe match did more for Hook than this did. Um, one thousand <laughs> percent. And, and Hook didn't win that match, and I think that's just perfect example of how you can do a lot for a wrestler and make their offense look good. But I, I just feel like this felt very contrived it's not for me. Just about the one, two, three win. It's way, it's way more than that with putting someone over specifically in a match. It's not just like, oh, he won, but like, how did he get there though? You know? Yeah. Um, afterwards, of course, Jericho gave it up. Um, and Jericho said, "Vortex time, baby. I'll see you next week." <laughs> Oh, you thought? Oh, hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? <laughs> just when you thought it was over. Just when you thought it was done. <laughs> just when you thought it was over. <laughs> Jericho said, "No, sir. I'll see you next week." <laughs> yeah, we we're not gonna leave you alone. We will be back with more Hook and Jericho stuff next week. And it's just like, we're okay, we're not gonna leave you alone. It's really funny. <laughs> Um, yeah, I can't say that I'm excited to see where the storyline goes, but at least at least Hook is on TV. I just yeah, yeah, I don't man. Know. <laughs> we want to see a bright side sure Hook's on TV. But what do you think he's gonna say next week? Let's be in a tag team. <laughs> Please don't stop, Jericho. Don't do Hook like this. I, I think this is leading to another match. I, it feels very much like the Andretti thing, or or even a Ricky no, Star thing, like where both of those people beat him. But it still ends up going to a rematch for Jericho. Um, I, I think we're getting another match. Oh, my God. That Ricky Starks one didn't hit at all either. Remember, he beat him, and we were like, cool, we should be done. And he was like, move no, on. Nope. Why? <sighs> nope. Nope. You're, you're getting, I think we're getting another match. My That's bro my can guess. still work. Look, Chris Jericho can still work. It's it, it's it's apparent. But you got to do a hiatus, bro. You got to take some time off. It's, that's all that it really is. If you took three months off and came back, people would feel way different about it. It's just like we're still seeing this guy every week phil and he's wears out his welcome with his matches with his promo with his angle like he always just wears out his welcome yeah um and you know kind of to my point that i felt like this match went too long i thought tony and uh mariah versus thunder rosa and diana could have gotten a little bit more, more time. time yep um and it, it was good. I, I I enjoyed it for what it was. I think the story stuff that they did in the match was better than the match itself. But I I, I just think it needed a little bit more time. Yeah, the 
I like the outcome. I think like Thunder Rosa getting her thing, her teaming up with Deanna, everything about it was great. But yeah, just a little bit more time because uh, do you kind of feel like the Tony Storm stuff is getting lost in the shuffle? Like it's not as prominent as it should be. Well, it could just be because from this week of me being like they didn't get enough time. I I don't think it got enough time. I think that yeah. was really the main issue with it. Yeah. Um, I thought the stuff that they did here was good. The, uh, Deanna in the backstage promo mm-hmm. still putting over how I didn't lose. I, I should have won that match because Tony tapped out. I want my right. rematch. And now Thunder Rosa has kind of jumped in front of line in front of her in the line because she pinned Tony in this match. Mm-hmm. And um, it's Deanna that picked Thunder Rosa as her tag team partner. So I could see Deanna going like, no, 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 I picked you to help me uh, beat them and get my rematch. This wasn't for you. And so her getting the pin in this match, and you could see Deanna was very much frustrated at the end of this match. Number one I, thought all this match? This, I thought all of that stuff was good. I thought I thought how we got uh, how we got back to the Thunder Rosa and Tony stuff was good. Yep. I think Deanna still having storyline stuff here is good. And then you still have Mariah doing her single white female thing. Mm-hmm. All of that stuff is great. That's to my point earlier of how, even though I feel like this match should have gotten more time, there's so much story development Stories. here yep. that I, I can, I can, I can see where they're going. I can see the vision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably the best thing about it. Just like if you're continuously telling stories with layers, and mm-hmm. the, you know, that's what we'll take. But we still want more match time for yeah. for these women. They deserve it. Yeah, I think we'll get there. Like I, because I, I think the match on Rampage is a perfect example where. Yeah, exactly. Um, when when you have a hot match and you give it the the time, it's good. But mm-hmm. this wasn't really supposed to be like this big match to showcase any of these four women. Right. It was to advance the story. Um, I still think that as a tag team match, it could have gotten a bit more time. But yeah. I I still am excited at where we're going here. I thought the the Tony and Mariah stuff that they put online was excellent <laughs> um <laughs> tony, tony coming straight away and being as funny as as always mariah is hilarious in this as well mariah trying to get in there yeah donna your your husband follows me on instagram and tony was not trying to hear that at all she's just like no 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 come here come here like starting it was come on come 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 get into my bosom get into my bosom and then she jumped out to say the uh the stuff about her husband she, back in the bosom back in the bosom mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. funny stuff um I, you can see also the layers that they're doing with them you can see luther is subtly getting annoyed with mariah's presence really good work i'm i'm loving uh um Tony is still developing her character crazy enough. Like she's still adding layers to to the bit, and Mariah's helping a lot. And this is great. I hope it maybe leads to a Diana and Thunder match to winner faces uh, Tony, just because I want to see uh, Thunder and Diana go one on one. Yeah, um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a uh, Diana versus Mariah May somewhere out of this. Mm. Uh, but I, but I, again, I think that's the great thing about what they're doing with the women's division. You have matches that you can build out of this. You got at least two matches out of just this tag yep. match. Exactly. Three, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dope stuff. Uh, yeah, the the, the swerve but uh butcher match wasn't really anything to write home about, but it was really to Life advance to something. The, it was really the advanced the stuff with Joe mm-hmm. and Buddy. Swerve versus to catch the Oh man. my God. <laughs> can't wait, man. They that teased ma- Pack versus Okada, and I was like, oh, we can't get much better than this. And then they were like, actually, what about Swerve and Takesh? And I was like, oh, okay. No, I'll see what y'all doing. <laughs> that that uh that show next week is looking fire. You got Swerve versus Takesha. Private party versus Young Bucks is also on that card. Oh. Very much excited for next week's Dynamite. Yes. Um, but uh, the main event took up most of the show. Um, I think it served its purpose to kind of, you know, put a bow on the Christian and Adam Copeland stuff. It, I don't want to say it wasn't my cup of tea, but it was a very WWE style hardcore match. And mm-hmm. if you're into that, it's gonna have it's gonna it's gonna be your wheelhouse. But if you're not, it's not gonna have that much mileage for you. Um, when everybody enjoyed... was uh, handcuffed in the corners, and I was like, "All right, uh, okay, you guys, this is WWE to the goddamn T." And everybody's standing there. I'm like, "What's going on here? Like, why is it? Why are we stalling in the middle of a match?" <laughs> 
Um, yeah, I, I, it was. Uh, I was sports entertained by bits yes. of it. I, I think yeah. the I think the hockey fight they had in the penalty box was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Copeland putting the jersey on Christian, and then Christian like slowly putting his arms <laughs> into it. Slowly like, puts it on. <laughs> Like his, like his dad was like, "This is what you're wearing. Put it on." And, <laughs> like, they, well, he's, like he's late for school. Get up, get up. Put your shirt on. Put your shirt on. Get, get up. <laughs> this is what you're putting on. He's got like the tears streaming down his face. Like he <laughs> his arms and his sleeves. Uh, that's what it immediately made me think of. Very funny. Um, there were several things about this I was entertained with. Um, the <laughs> the Mama Wayne stuff is supposed to look hokey and silly. Yes. And at this point, I laugh at how bad it looks like mm-hmm. her coming out there and hitting hitting him, him with the hockey stick in slow motion. I was just like, why? <laughs> why are her, we doing her this? slow stare? I'm like, this is very silly. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are we doing this? Man? Um, but like I said, it, it went on a little bit too long for me as yeah. well. This match was yeah. what, like 30 minutes almost. Oh, and mm-hmm. and there were parts of it where i was just like boy this is still going huh but <laughs> uh it, i like some of it i like the the yeah. the, the uh cross body block through the table and and him yeah, the, take hit the nut shot with uh what's the what's the, the spike the six name spike i was gonna say jimmy for some reason <laughs> jimmy with, with spike <laughs> yeah the, the stuff out in the hallway was good it, it was an entertaining match i i feel like it was a little long um uh, but long. A little too I, much sports I, entertainment, a little too long, but you know. but I enjoyed it. Uh, Christian is your sorry, Christian Adam Copeland is your new TNT champion. I feel like that was the right outcome. We need to move on from Copeland versus Christian. This has been yeah. going on long enough, and I think he's gonna do good things with that. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna do good things with that belt. Um, I hope that this leads to more open challenge matches with him with that belt, and I'm interested to see who he's gonna have major feuds with. Hmm. I guess I hadn't really thought about it. like what's where does he go from here? Like there's a bunch of there's a bunch of wrestlers that I think could fill that role. So it's going to be kind of exciting to see what happens here. But yeah, someone was uh in the the that chat earlier asking about how we thought about Canada. Yo, y'all were insane that uh yeah. when Don Callis came out to interrupt Swerve and <laughs> they you guys booed him out Crap. of a fucking building. That was insane. Yeah, crowd was up for the things they were supposed to be up for. They definitely booed the people that they were supposed to boo for. All of the Christian uh, hammy heel spots in this match, they worked. The crowd was they booing all of hard. it. <laughs> when they were doing the, the all the I quit stuff that is, again, very WWE-S, where it's got to, I got to, I got to hold the microphone up to each guy's mouth and they got to give the monologues. That stuff was hidden for the crowd because they were biting. They were biting on all the heel stuff when Christian was like, no, I'm not a quitter like Toronto. That crowd let him have it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, all that stuff was good. Um, but yeah, I, I think this was a strong episode of Dynamite in the sense that the stuff that hit was really good. Stuff that wasn't really for me was forgivable because the other stuff I enjoyed so much. Um, yeah, like I like that's how I felt about the main event. But the crowd being so into it was like, all yeah. right, I understand why this is happening. Like maybe not for me, but it's definitely for somebody. Yeah, uh, Will Ospreay is a television wrestler, buddy. Brother, I was curious as to how this would look. I because mm. I was like, what does what does he look like as a weekly television wrestler? What does he look yeah. like coming out cutting regular promos? Turns out pretty goddamn good because this guy came out (laughs) and he was incredible. He came out with the energy. The crowd was into it the whole way. This guy is over, buddy. His energy, just how he comes out of the the tunnels and he's jumping everywhere and he just feels like he's excited about being here. uh, Alcada and Osprey, we were both like, what are they going to look like as TV wrestlers? And two out of two, great execution on presenting us. Oh, uh, Osprey feels so much just like osprey like if you know the history of his character kind of how he was when he wasn't the super most serious in the new japan and he would do the promos that were just like enduring and and in and, and charismatic and all those things he's that person like he's 100 percent will osprey they didn't change his character they didn't change anything about him and that's working a lot on american television and uh it's amazing because we've only seen a couple of matches of him and they've been uh, they've been insane but he's going to establish himself as this promo tv guy and then have this match with brian and people are going to be like who is this this guy's an alien like how did where did he come from you know 
Yeah, it, man, I thought he was great. I thought he killed it. He's killed it in all the segments he's had so far yes. on, Di- on Dynamite and Collision. Mm. But I this one, it was something about this one. I'm just like, Promo. yeah, the energy is just there, man. Mm. You can see that the crowd is behind him no matter what. Yeah. He, he just last year in front of this crowd wiped his ass with a Canadian flag. And yeah. this crowd could not care less. He, of course, yeah. apologized for that. And the crowd was into that, but it didn't even matter. He oh, came right, out there. He did not have to apologize. They didn't care. Yeah. They were like, Osprey, bro, we don't care. We are lit. We are here. And this crowd was hot for him the second he walked out there. Yeah. The feeling. It, he's, Osprey man. was great signing. He he was great. Uh, I think um, like he skipped the line. Like I, I'm like, what what what's the world title line? Like what's going on here? Because this guy's like might be the number one baby face in the whole company off of being there for four five weeks. You know what I mean? Like what the hell? Yeah. Like I knew he was gonna come and cook because he's the best in ring wrestler in the world. But like he's establishing himself at even better with these promos. Yeah. This was uh man. Really, really high on him with this company at this point. I think mm-hmm. that he was an incredible signing, very likable at this point. And I mean, it's essentially, like you said, what he was doing before he started doing the heel stuff with New Japan, where mm-hmm. it was just like likable meathead wrestler guy that exactly. that can do like insane flips and all this otherworldly <laughs> shit. Uh, I mean, but, just, he's just a regular guy though like he could he could have the yeah. best match you've ever seen in your entire life but then he's just like you want to chill and watch tv or whatever you know yeah uh i i like the uh, not just um him drawing attention to this more attention to the brian stuff um uh, saying that he can he can fill his shoes because his shoes are too small mm-hmm. um but also saying yeah but i was doing stuff over there in my 20s when i wrestled shibata but now no no i'm I'm 30 i have a mortgage i have a kid i have dogs and cats (laughs) um it was just all endearing to me it was great um and out of that we are also on next week's dynamite getting osprey versus shibata (laughs) which just sounds insane to me but we're getting this match um on uh, dynamite (laughs) a part of me is just like okay guys please be careful but but at the same time Awesome. This card sounds awesome, man. Like, <laughs> really, really excited for this card. Um, I feel like uh, Osprey was just talking about wanting a match with Shibata like a year ago, like very recently being like, oh, Shibata's back. I'm trying to get one of those. And now he's getting one of those. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Takeshita also came out at one point, and I'm still on my push Takeshita to the moon. Every time this guy comes out, he feels like a big star. Yeah. And I feel like he's just outgrown certain things they're doing with him. Just yes. do something big with him. Put him in a major storyline. Put him in a title match. Do something big with this guy. He's ready. I do like them telling the story of him and Swerve having kind of like the same record, and that's why they're having the match. This yeah. match is going to be <sighs> Shibata and Osprey, and then Swerve and Takeshita is like, yeah, what? <laughs> Fire. Um, very much excited for that match ne- next week. Um, man. I think that's the that's that was one of the things when AEW first started, where you get a hot episode of Dynamite and you come away more excited for what's happening next week. It yep. didn't always feel like that when the company got a little cold last year. Mm-hmm. And make no mistake about it, at one point AEW was cold, and I feel like I think man, we all could admit that the the momentum has absolutely swung back in another direction. Mm-hmm. Um, the feeling is restored, man. There's there's more to be excited about on these shows than there was. Like even a few weeks ago, I think the Continental Classic did so much for the company, yeah. but also just bringing in new energy, bringing in mm-hmm. new stars has helped a lot. Um, you know, Phil, what I loved about uh, Attitude Era Monday Night War Wrestling is every time the show end, you could not wait until next week. It was like you were craving to see more wrestling. And that's the feeling that AEW has been giving up of these last couple of weeks. I've been watching like shows on streaming services and like when a show ends, like a big show that everybody's watching, they'll end on a sick ass cliffhanger. So you want to watch again. Mm-hmm. And wrestling has lo- uh, you, it lost that feeling for a while where the, it was like, well, why, why should I come back for more? Like, I don't care. Like you established everything on the show. On both sides, WWE and AEW, they've left these cliffhangers where you're like, damn, I just cannot wait to see the next show. And that's how this Dynamite felt, especially with these match announcements. It's like, damn, next week is going to be even better than this show we're currently watching now. Yeah, I'm um, very much excited for the, the, the shows coming up, the matches announced for next week, and Collision. I'm excited for those. And this, man, this pay-per-view looks like it's going to be fire. Like, based on the stuff they're teasing for it, oh this God. pay-per-view looks like it's going to be incredible. 
St. Louis, you lucky sons of guns. Yeah, this this the Brian did the interview this week where he's like, Osprey and I are on the card and we're not gonna be the main event. Like that's how insane this show is. <laughs> Bro, Brian cutting that promo on collision where he was backstage in the yoga stance and he mm -hmm. was like he was getting this shit off. I was like, man. This guy's just on another, he's just on another planet. Right? That's what Denise and he's I were talking here. about on the post show is Osprey's with his great promo this week. Brian with that yoga stance promo. These guys are two considerably one and two in the world, best wrestlers. And they're getting us excited with promos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just man, uh, a lot to like about this. Uh, we, we got the rampage right afterwards. Um, uh, <laughs> there were things on rampage that didn't really hit for me but again this was this is the thing with three hours of wrestling it's, it's tough That's to it stay is, yeah. excited for three hours because it uh, it's different if it's a pay-per-view it's kind of like non-stop action back Easy. and forth big matches right. but different weekly television it's hard to keep uh momentum for three hours mm -hmm. um i thought it started well um you like that transition that they did <laughs> Yeah. with uh them being in the middle of the edge and christian match and then rampage <laughs> yeah, we're right in the, actually this is rampage now <laughs> rampage uh yeah man i have to say very very happy that jay white and the guns are back to being themselves again because Thank man God. that that promo and that segment at poolside was very very good the, the mm -hmm. guns being being cocky and annoying and funny again jay white being himself cocky funny as well um them coming in first of all starting with the skeleton over there with the darby on mount everest sign <laughs> with very funny them in the middle of talking darby no and this goes <laughs> 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 very very funny stuff man I, I thought that was great i thought uh jay white uh, immediately drawing attention to hey man i saved your life um mm -hmm. you can say what you want but thank you uh, thank you is fine i saved yep. your life um mm -hmm. i i thought all of them acknowledging like nah we didn't need them uh the guns acknowledging that they beat them for the tag titles and saying hey well maybe we'll beat you for some more belts mm -hmm. loved Good it work. Yeah, I, I'm, I, happy to, I, I'm happy to see Jay White in this element. This is the Jay White we want, bro. I don't know what y'all been doing, but uh, we're here now. Bro, him poolside with all white and the shades on, talking mm -hmm. that shit. Loved it. Yeah. Yeah, really good work. I'm I'm happy that they broke that up. And like I was saying, we talked about a little bit earlier that the acclaim responded to that. And what's up with the acclaim, Phil? Uh Bowens was the most likable part about their response. I thought Definitely. Bowens, Bowens, <laughs> Far Bowens, <away. laughs> Bowens' energy was great. I thought mm -hmm. his uh, he he was great in front of that live crowd. Uh, the Mac stuff wasn't really clicking. Um, I feel like you got to take the belt off of them and move on at this point. Merge those belts. I've been saying that as well. Merge the belts, man. Yeah, like we we don't need two sets of trios belts. Um, I, Especially when the I don't know why they keep doing this to the Ring of Honor belts. So they'll make somebody Ring of Honor champion, and then they'll get them on the main roster, and they'll never to be seen in Ring, Ring of Honor again, and they don't defend the belt when they come over here. So it's like, what are y'all really doing? Yeah, they need to mar merge those belts because they're not, like, being defended anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think you got to move. You got to move forward Jeez, with the trios Jesus. belts because, uh, crazy enough, I felt like, they were in a better position when house of black was trios champions because at least right. they were defending the belts they had mm -hmm. actual things going yeah, uh relations and everything yeah they yeah. they at least added some kind of something to the belts yeah so but yeah i thought i thought the 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 uh blackpool combat club sorry blackpool combat club mm -hmm. bullet club gold stuff was great the mm -hmm. response wasn't really Ooh, hidden but if it's just to get to the feud with these two get to it i thought it mm -hmm. i thought they sold um Billy being off TV well and made that feel like a big deal. That was good. I thought that they sold Darby's injury very well here as well and made Bullet Club Gold look like a threat again because they mm -hmm. definitely needed that. They desperately needed something like this because they was looking like a joke after the MJF feud. Yeah, they weren't, they weren't threats to anyone. They, they needed this. They need to establish that Jay White has the potential to be the biggest heel in the company. Like, we need to know that.
Yeah, we need to, yeah, they need to feel like a serious threat. Like they, mm -hmm. they can do the joke, the jokes and comedy stuff, but that can't be all they are. And right. I think they had that initially when they came over for Collision, but just the, the feud with MJF just mm -hmm. really killed them as a threat. It made them look toothless. Uh, but this, this brought the energy back for them. I thought the yeah. stuff with him, them and Darby and the stuff with uh, Acclaim ended up working out for them. They just got to stick the landing, merge them belts, move on. That's it. Get get them belts merged together, and I think we can salvage all of this. Yeah, because you could do something good with this afterwards. You got trios that can challenge Bullet Cup Gold for this, and mm -hmm. I just think you got to figure out what you're going to do with the claim moving forward as well. What do they do? They claim split them up or keep them together? I don't know. I I would like to see Bowens do some singles wrestling because he's so yeah. good, and I feel like he's getting better as a promo guy. Um. I don't know. I don't know either. Don't Therapy know. for Max Caster. Therapy. Let's try it. Let's try it. That's all I'm saying. Let's try it. All you have to do is try it one time. Like Twitter is not therapy in general, you guys. That's not even for Max Caster. That's for everybody. The the thing that I've noticed with AEW fans online, once they don't like you, they don't like you, man. They will turn quickly. One hundred percent fact. If they're gone, they're not coming back. And once they turn on you online, certain fans. Once they're out on you, they're out. Mm -hmm. um, did anything else happen on Rampage before we move forward? We already kind of talked about the main event pretty extensively, I think. Yeah, I thought the street fight was really good. That was really the big uh, appeal of Rampage for me. Um, what if, for whatever reason, I popped hard for Mark being back on screen saying, and now the main event. Yeah, me um, too. Yeah, that was uh, dope. But yeah, the, the, the women really stole the show, I felt like, on mm -hmm. Rampage. Uh, I thought that was a, a very good match, and I thought it was a good way to build story stuff. Um, I thought it was a very smart finish of not just making Julia look good, but sowing the seeds of there might be tension between Willow and Statlander because... Uh, Willow did that fire Death Valley driver through the table. But in the process, she took herself out of the match so she couldn't help Statlander later in the match when she got in trouble. Uh, but I thought everything around the way, the way that this match was put together, just so many good things. There are so many things in it that I feel like we've seen it to death, mm -hmm. but the women in the match made it work. Like when I saw the tax come out, I was like, man, we see the tax so much, Brett. Tax are in every, ma every big match at this point. But I thought, man, the the spot on the on the on the tax looked good. The super kick with the with the tax looked very good as well. Mm -hmm. Looked very convincing. Um, yeah, big fan of the street fight. I thought, and the street I liked fight, how they did with the thumbtacks. How that uh, they did the double thumbtacks. Like, oh, you got thumbtacks. I got thumbtacks too. Like they tried to change it a little bit, but we might be okay with thumbtack spots for a while. Just saying. Yeah, but yeah, I really enjoyed the street fight. I think the street fight was one of the better AEW matches this week. It was, yeah. The, all the ladies just went out there. And like we're saying, everybody knows that Sky Blue wanted this so bad. All she's ever wanted to do is have this hardcore match. So for her to go out there and execute like this and just have so much fun is awesome. Put these women in more positions like this. Um, but moral of the story is three hour on Wednesday. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the Death Valley Driver, somebody said was epic. That was great. The uh code blue on the table is also excellent. Yep. Um but yeah, three hour if this was the this was dipping our toes into three hours of dynamite. The water's not hurt. fine, you guys. <laughs> I don't I don't want it. Um We're I don't dipping want our toes hours. in, the water is not fine. I'm okay. <laughs> I don't want three hours of dynamite every week. Um I I, I and love I could AEW in their wrestling, but I'm okay. I'll watch Rampage on Fridays, dude. Leave it over there. I can see the proponents of it that when you put Rampage in this spot, more people might pay attention to it than it being True. on Fridays. Yeah. I understand the idea that now when you have a three hour card, you it looks like you have two women's matches within yep. three hours and, mm -hmm. and you have these things closer together. But you also have things that kind of rub together. Like you end the first two hours with this big hardcore style i quit match and then you end the three hours of the whole with another hardcore. kind of hardcore match well as well mm -hmm. and while i think both matches were fine i enjoyed the street fight better than the other match but it just kind of felt like overkill like i don't know if i needed all of this in three hours <laughs> yeah that's that's what's crazy about three hour tv wrestling because like 
I don't want to see a pro after three hours. If we're in the third hour, I don't want to see like a long in ring promo. I don't want to see long promos at all. We're past like that's like first two hour, first hour shit. Like that the shows have to be completely restructured. And the way that they did it this week, it was like they booked Rampage exactly how they book Rampage every week, and it doesn't work the same coming immediately after what they presented on Dynamite. And it's like I get it. I'm sure that the the higher ups are probably like, yeah, let's make this thing three hours, money, all this shit. Like it's essentially the same thing that a that WWE has. Like they're three hours for a reason, and it's not because they want to book more wrestling. It's because somebody else wants them to have three hours worth of TV programs. So if they went, I wouldn't. I'd be like, wouldn't be surprised at all. But I don't want it. Don't want yeah, it. yeah. I'm not really a fan because the the street fight was really the biggest selling point of it. The other stuff we got was essentially squash matches. Not even essentially. They were squash matches. Uh, The tag match. And they booked it just like a a regular Rampage. And it's like, I'm not sticking around for a regular Rampage. Yeah. Um, I am because I'm a wrestling freak, but most people aren't. Yeah. The the tag title tournament match that opened the show was fine, but it was predictable. We knew that uh, best friends were winning and advancing to the next round. I, I didn't feel like there was a... I don't feel like there was anybody out there that thought that Don Callis' family was moving on to next no. round. Unfortunately. Yeah, Hobbs had a fire spine buster in this. He he looked great in the match, but I He did look th- great. But this felt very predictable. Shout out to Powerhouse Hobbs. Yeah, but okay. uh I I don't need three hours and I don't need it. If 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 uh and I can see them coming away from this and feeling like this may have worked, but I don't want it. I don't it didn't really work. <laughs> Okay, let's keep these separate and, and move forward. Uh, let's get into some super chats. Uh, I Carly star Miranda Cosgrove is back saying, I miss MJF. MJF is worth five New Japan legends. That's pretty crazy, I Carly. Um, Maybe three. What, what'd you think of the Cole segment? Because I feel like the Cole segment kind of laid the groundwork for some MJF stuff. And that's why I was kind of chuckling this week when I saw people doing the Look, his profile's not on the on the website anymore but i feel like there were certain things in the segment that i felt like teased mjf um i wish i cared about that That's um i wish i cared i'm happy about mjf coming back but him feuding with ward though i have negative interest in yeah uh yeah I, 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 we got the reason I say that it teased MJF stuff is because I feel like we got more of Adam Cole acting more and more like MJF because yeah. his response to Wardlow losing the match is exactly what you'd expect MJF to do of going like, you disappointed me, you have to make up for this. And mm-hmm. even him saying, you know, I could be, I mean, you could be world champion right now. Um, yeah. And then being hypocritical with the whole thing of like MJF did this to you while he's doing the same thing that MJF did to him. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. I I believe MJF will be back soon ish. Mm -hmm. I don't know when, but it feels like within the next month or so. If I just got enough. Victor Botino, guys, I got a proposition for you. Dot, 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 LOLs. I don't want any part of that. (laughs) Nah. (laughs) Pass. I'm chill. I'm chill. We're, 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 We're chilling. Mm-hmm. Uh, crazy 101 says phil the twitter space was wild with ibu he was at the uh ibu y'all had a twitter space what was y'all talking about ibu is at this point the only person i will do spaces with like <laughs> i don't i won't just start my own spaces like i used to as much anymore but when ibu's doing a space i usually will hop in there and talk to him mm-hmm. um and ibu spaces are definitely adventure they're definitely Full of a lot of random happenings. Bro, we having them shits packed. Sometimes I'll stumble in by the one. I'm like, yo, there's hella people in here listening to this. Yeah. Uh, Crazy101 also says, Osprey is AEW's Cody with the fans. Uh, 100 Okada. Uh, flame emoji. Thumbs up. Oh, yeah. Dave was also in the uh, news this week because he said that, uh, that Osprey is better than Cody in every single way that is presented. Definitely a take. Which, which part is Okada that. not? I mean, I keep saying Okada, me up Okada and Osprey. Which element is Osprey not better than Cody in? Uh, I think, I think he, I think Cody's just better all around at getting people to feel st- stuff with his promos. Even if the promo doesn't hit with me, I feel like he's just better at certain things, and I feel like we saw that on SmackDown. Yeah. Um, even if it's not like this. This segment that is a hundred percent gold, 
he's just he's it's just something about Cody, man. It just you just want to like him no matter what, man. Cody can sell an angle like yes, nobody can. That motherfucker will get you to believe. So yeah, I, I don't think Osprey's a better promo than Cody. That's no, I don't. I don't think he is either. And I I think that's more of an experience thing than anything. Yeah, I think Cody yeah. is Cody has done it on the biggest stages at this point as a television wrestler, as an For indie a wrestler, long time, almost twenty as, years at this point. Yeah, so I I think that he's I think that he has the character stuff and the promo stuff over him at this point. But wrestling, absolutely, I spray it better. Than him. <laughs> yeah, come on. I mean, any anybody would say that. Yeah. Um, Irene C says there's two great angles available in which Kenny returns to the now heel elite without him and MJF returning, but without with with, with Osprey having taken his top face spot. Oh, so Os- Osprey and MJF, that's a pretty good feud. I like that. Yeah. Uh... I hear what you're saying with the Osprey stuff, but that crowd's gonna go bananas when Omega comes back. The way he left with the with the reasons he had to leave because of his illness, nah, that crowd's gonna go nuts when Omega comes back. Insane. And if he comes back, Phil, to tease wrestling fucking Okada, can you Bro, imagine? <laughs> the Omega Okada stare down when he comes back again. The, the, he's out of here bro that crowd is yeah. gonna go crazy for that yeah they're gonna be people crying in the the damn crowd with how crazy it's gonna be um i carly miranda cosgrove is back appreciate you carly <laughs> you're really helping us out cody mentioning bullet club but no pop yeah that was i don't really think people the wrestling the wwe fans got what he was getting at but you know. um he did a lot of things that that, that worked for me yeah but that crowd doesn't care about those kind of things they don't. Like, if he did that somewhere else that crowd would have would have reacted differently yeah he has to bring up like evolution or something for that crowd or like dx or something they don't care about no bullet club yeah, ww crowd is just <laughs> uh speed punk says shibata wrestled beat down my buddy kevin matthews on rampage was cool seeing my friend on tv yeah kevin matthews is back there uh, doing his thing yeah um, that was a cool little uh, a squash match for cool showcase. Yeah. yeah, Eloquent says I was at Dynamite. Don Callis booze were deafening. Shout out to Eloquent, a uh, friend of the show, and yeah. y'all got a pretty good show out there. Um, for those people, a few weeks ago, they were doing the "I'm tired of Don" thing. Might have been that he was linked to somebody else that it wasn't working with. Because when you get him separate again, bro. I want to say everything's been working out pretty well since he's uh gotten away from there. It, the 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 heat is there. It, it, it's it's getting the intended reaction. I think I think the Don and Jericho stuff just went too long. That's it. That's all. Of course, the, the uh, Chris Jericho world is welcome. Who's surprised? Uh, <laughs> and I think our last super chat of the day is from Hunter Tillman. Thank you, Hunter Tillman. Che- appreciate you. Happy Grabster Day. Please keep my best friend's family in your prayers. Sadly, lost her a few days ago, but thank you for being my escape from chaotic life. Appreciate all Fightful does. Uh, love out to you and everybody involved in that hunter you're a supporter of throughout multiple podcasts and we appreciate you happy that we can help for a little bit of time yeah definitely sorry for your loss uh, glad we can help you in any way mm-hmm. uh, check and see if we got any humper chats humper chats on you <laughs> I don't know what that is Okay, yeah, uh, we got we got one for, from Victor Bettino. He says, uh, "Would it not be best for the audience to have Rampage live on Wednesday and then replay it on Friday?" Uh, I would watch it more. Uh, watch out for Little Dick Central, <laughs> fam. Cannot wait to see Damian Priest walk out of Night One as head with the heavyweight championship. Not um, I'm starting to believe more and more that Damian Priest is going to cash in during that World Heavyweight Title match. Um, so I don't it? know if I don't know if he's gonna win it, but something about it is making me believe that he's gonna cash in on that match. Maybe he's gonna cash in the middle of it, like Seth did, and make it into a triple threat match. Can very much see him doing that, and then Drew pinning him to win the match and rubbing Seth's face in it because he out Seth to Seth. Ah, ah, oh, okay. I just connected a bunch of dots to Seth. Seth did the one of the most famous cash ins of all time. Okay. Yeah. I yeah, I could very much see that happening. And mm-hmm. I think some people would of course be disappointed with a failed cash in, but I think if you execute it that way and still give Drew the win, I think it could work. Yes. Uh, yeah, if it, if he cashes it in and Seth retains, it's not gonna work. But if he cashes it in no. and Drew wins, I think it could work. 
Yeah, and and I mean that that kind of furthers the stuff you were already drawing doing with Drew and Damien anyway. Um, yeah, I I'm, more and more I'm starting to believe that Damien is going to try and cash in during that match. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the, our last segment we got the Cody and Ro- Roman stuff from SmackDown. Um, Cody, <laughs> Cody on Raw, doing the this is me being not pg guys i'm I'm going over the line i didn't really care for that Mm -hmm. um but they can't all be winners yeah (laughs) can't all be winners um i've been wondering can roman get the energy back on smackdown because we've got on this podcast and said that with rock there roman has been an afterthought behind him he it, it feels like rock is soaking up most of the energy in these segments um, so I was curious how it would look with Rock not there and Roman doing what he usually does. Um, and so when he did the Pat McAfee show beforehand and he was in full form, he he threw a shot at Punk. Um, he was getting some lies off. He he did the whole, I didn't have to go to Hollywood. Hollywood came to me. I was like, okay. Uh, <laughs> right. and, but, it, but it was Roman in character doing what he usually does. And I was like, this is the Roman that has been missing on SmackDown. Um, he needs to bring that energy back to the Cody showdown because I feel like it's become so much about building the tag match that we need the stuff between them one-on-one to get us back focused on what the end game is for this. Mm-hmm. And uh, he did to varying degrees. Right, he didn't bring the energy that he brought in that Pat McAfee thing, though. He no. wasn't like that. No, I, I still felt like this felt like, if anything, coming away from this segment, I was like, yeah, it's time. It's something yeah, beautiful. One thousand percent. That's what exactly what I got from this. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I watched this SmackDown, and the glaring thing that I noticed different than the previous ones was the flow flows way different when Dwayne's not there. Mm-hmm. And Dwayne attached Dwayne has been such a glaring big giant light on these matches in this WrestleMania weekend that this title match has been kind of muddied and, and lost in and all the shenanigans that has happened. So I was like, this is a very important face-to-face with Cody and Roman because we haven't seen them have a face-to-face in a couple weeks. Like, it's mostly been about all the other shenanigans. And I thought that Roman didn't... I'm like, I'm hoping in his storyline purposes, but he, like, it didn't feel like he believed in himself, honestly. Like, it was like, this isn't the Roman Reigns that's been on SmackDown commanding the crowd, controlling everything. He's just like, oh, yeah, we're going to wrestle Cody and you know, you suck. Seth's going to turn on you. Like, I didn't believe any of it. I didn't believe none. I'm like, this isn't the Roman that I'm used to. It feels like the rock is so big of a shadow over him that he's still stuck in like, he, like in his brain, he thinks he's the little guy now. Cause that's how he was moving. Um, there were things that I liked about it. I thought him coming out and doing his usual stick and just felt like something was missing because rock wasn't there Mm -hmm. and it was very obvious um but i thought he tried to do his usual i'm confident and i beat you before i can beat you again and he faltered a little bit here and i think that it was intentional to build the story that they're telling because he tried to come out and go you're stupid you keep Mm -hmm. doing the same thing you won't listen to anybody you keep thinking that you can come out here and do the right thing and you'll be rewarded about it no 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 that doesn't matter you what are you going to do? You're going to go and team up with my old, old little bro. He's telling you he's going to be your shield. I don't know if you remember the shield. Mm-hmm. Why did that work out? But the thing about this that worked and this was Cody in full form. He had a response for everything. Everything mm-hmm. he tried to throw at him. Cody was ready for it. Mm-hmm. He he tried to throw the shield line at him. He was like, yeah, I remember the shield. Remember who beat the shield? Yep. The Roses. <laughs> I thought that was a great comeback. I, I thought him, I thought him trying to say, "Hey, we knew use the numbers game. You haven't figured this out." And him just looking like, "No, that's old news to me. I've done this before. I've been there before. I've done the numbers game with Bullet Club. I've been here with you. I've seen what you do. I've seen you talk about how I am the best number two, buddy." When he dropped that line, <laughs> I'm the one. I was like, "Yeah, that's hard." He's out of here, bro. He tried to he tried to nail him with the man. You you you're a politician. You just bring the kids out. No, that was hard. To be honest, mm-hmm. bro, that was hard. When he came out with the kid and the kid did his entrance with him, it was dope. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, you're trying to nail him on something that people liked. Everybody man, likes when Cody does that stuff. 
Like, yeah, that's it's a- endearing for him. That that makes people like him more when he does these little acts that Roman was trying to get on him for. Yeah, so you're trying to do the whole, man, that ain't going to work. But what it really said to me is you're a guy that they made the face of a company as a face and you can never get it to work. And you're watching somebody that's in your spot now that all he's missing is the belt and he's making it work as a baby face in a way that you never could. And so you're telling him that it's Mm -hmm. not going to work because it didn't work for you. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was the best thing about all of it. And even him saying, man, he's going to turn on you because he turned on me. And at the end of it, when he tried to, snap his finger and bring his guys out and Seth was there. <laughs> I was like, nah, it's over. You can see it. You can see the mm-hmm. walls are closing in on Roman. It's a wrap for you, bro. That's like <laughs> when he, when he tried to snap his finger and you saw all of the mechani- mechanizations that he used last year to beat Cody is not working no more. Mm-hmm. Him going, Oh, I got, I got my guys. And not only does he have two guys standing next to him, he has your biggest ops standing next to you. This was this was Drake after all this time throwing yeah. all of these shots and looking around and no Metro Boomin. Yeah, Metro Boom is standing up there with future <laughs> and fucking Kendrick, bro. Like he you outside talking about man, I, solo and Jimmy here though. No. Rollins is sitting up there laughing your face off because he knows what's coming. Yeah. And Jay is like, hey man, I didn't want to have to do this, but I will. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a great way to end, end SmackDown. The, the I, ending was a lot saving. I didn't love the promo parts because uh, I, you know, I didn't th- think the Roman was that great. But I did love Cody's responses. But the ending definitely, with them just walking out and having that stare down, saved it a lot. Yeah, I because I I thought if your takeaway was the only thing that Roman got him on is you still haven't learned your lesson. Rollins has been telling you you can't try to beat this guy alone. It's not going to work. And if you thought that he still fell for the trick by coming out and trusting him and coming out there by himself. And then when you looked around and he didn't, it was just like, oh, man, it's over for you, bro. (laughs) It's a a wrap. That was the biggest thing of this. It's like, okay, this is showing that they have to. We've talked we've been talking about it. Cody's got to leave this damn show with that belt. If they if if Roman wins at WrestleMania, Phil, I don't. I just can't. It, yeah, there there like, were just yeah, there were just so many things here that worked. That man, things that were very small things that might not have worked if they hadn't done all of this stuff building up to the year. Because again, believe you me, Cody should have won last year. But if you don't have all this stuff that they've built for a year, there are certain stuff like Cody extending his hand to try and shake his hand again, like he did last year in the build and knowing he wasn't going to do it. And Roman trying to joke it off and shaking Heyman's hand and they both kind of laugh at him. He's just sitting there looking like, okay, cool. Don't shake my hand. I'm still going to beat you for that belt. (laughs) They got to beat up now, Cody. They got to give Cody that win. I do like that. They let him, kind of get the upper hand like he got the upper hand last night like it doesn't look like he, a wash for him you know i i said it the last time all four of them were in the ring that i thought seth and cody won that segment this mm-hmm. was again i thought cody won this segment again he came out of this looking much better than he did on raw i mm-hmm. thought when they were t- they were across the ring for, from each other you can see it he shook when when seth okay. came out there you could you can see not just that he shook that Rollins is siding with him, but you can see you can see the PTSD of him. It's just like you again. It's always you. Get out of the way. Like it's always you. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, I do like that they kind of when Roman did the snap, like they didn't immediately come out. It, there's a lot of kind of layers to this. Like they they kind of slowly laid it out for us, and and it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, if if you also look at the layers to it of he built the bloodline so what happened with him and Seth would never happen to him again mm. and the guy that that could potentially end the bloodline is not just the guy that you trusted the most and made your, your right hand guy your family guy but it's also Seth again mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that is great storytelling I, I don't think all the bloodline stuff has been perfect but I thought that that was great. It's a way to bring it back around for sure with like it got 
things were looking kind of crazy for a while, but they definitely brought it back. It just depends on how they stick this landing. Like, I don't he's, know Cody's going to happen. Win. Yeah, Cody, that's a, there's Cody's only one win. landing to stick, and it's Cody winning that championship. Uh, somebody on the post show last night was like, you know, Vince is gone because Roman said that Cody was number two and they didn't make any poop jokes off of it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, they did. Then. That's true. <laughs> they, they did. They, but yeah, man, all of the stuff that Roman, man, he kept trying to throw out of all, all his usual tricks. He kept trying to throw out a draw two and Cody had a draw two for him every time, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nah, man. This, this, this definitely felt like the the walls is closing in, man. Not just that the walls closing in, but when he tried to hit him with the, you sure you can trust Seth Rollins? And he came back immediately. Was like, you sure you can trust the Rock? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's sure. It's looking away because when you snapped your finger, all your little minions popped up. Rock was nowhere to be found. Where he was? Where was he? He wasn't anywhere. Yeah, he tried to get him with the, hey, when you needed help last week, where was Rollins? He didn't help you. And then the same thing immediately happened to him. I love it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it just, yeah, it feels like Phil Collins' time for him, bro. It's, 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 <laughs> the drum, drums is playing, buddy. I can feel it. I can feel it calling, Roman. It's time. It's yeah. It's feeling like it's over for you, buddy. And mm-hmm. if you're one of them Roman guys that's online, that's like he has to win, buddy. You are wrong. No. Sorry, you are wrong. It's time, man. You got to pull the trigger. For the bit for a while, and I'm like, yeah, Roman Ro- Hogan. I'm um, no, they can't. No, we're past that. We're it, past all the bidding. We're past all the jokes. Over, Roman got to lose that belt. Yeah, um, I thought this was a good way to continue to build to the WrestleMania match. I am excited for both the main events um, when they were talking about it on Pat McAfee. And you're not only looking at Roman headlining two nights of WrestleMania, which I did not think would be a thing, um, but mm-hmm. it makes more sense because they're trying to get him to the point where he breaks Hogan's record of the most main event appearances. This gives him two in one year, so he's Aha. that much closer to it. Yep. Um, but also, I just continue to say, Cody coming back, and winning two Royal Rumbles in a row, main eventing two years in a row, and then having two WrestleMania main events in the same year within a span of three years, that's crazy. That's wild as hell. Like, I, I don't even think he probably imagined it'd be this crazy. Like, he knew he was going to cook going back to WWE, but this is insane. I think with the double main events, Roman does beat Hogan's right. Because I think Ro- Hogan has nine? It's eight. No. It's eight. Yeah. I think it's eight. And I think this beats it because I think Roman has eight now, and then this will be ten. I think Roman has six. Does he? I think he. I think he he's going eight? to. I think he's going to tie it this year. Mm. I could be wrong, but I, I I don't have the numbers in front of me. Bro um, has a lot, but I think he's got six. Mm. I thought he had eight. That's a lot of fucking main events that he should lose this time. No let me, more. let me, uh, let me do some Google food food right away. Mm-hmm. Um, Get your Googles. <laughs> your Googles. <laughs> um, let's see. How many do you got, Rome? Let's see. Da, 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 da. Hogan holds the record with eight. That was correct. Mm. Um, Triple H is right below him with seven. Mm. Roman has six as of 2022. Oh. He made have been in last year, so that would be seven. So this year, he's going to break it. You're right. He's going to be at nine. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so- Hogan has a fake one, too, because uh, I would count WrestleMania nine, even though I fucking hate it. But he yeah. was the last person at that. Like he had a he had a match to win the belt, so that means he may have been at the show. So that's fucking nine right there. Yeah. So Roman is currently at seven. Mm. This year was two. He'll end up at nine. So he'll mm. he'll officially have the record. I didn't even think about that little accolade. That's hilarious. <laughs> like, I've been well, trying to get if they give him two main events, he gets two main events. <laughs> I've been trying to get him to that one for a minute. So uh, I, I figured that that was part of the reason of him working two nights in a row. Smart, smart. But yeah, 
all y'all that thought he was breaking this fictional Hogan record of most uh, days, you're not breaking this, the Bruno record, so it doesn't matter. No, this no is matter. the record that's going to matter, him having the most WrestleMania main event appearances. And he's probably going to have more before all is said and done. He's going to go well over eight by by then. He's going to have at least 10 or 11. Minimum one more next year, you know? Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, I did. I didn't love everything on SmackDown. I think some of the stuff, the stuff on back SmackDown that was good was good. The the Dom and and uh, Santo stuff was good. That's mm-hmm. actually the guy Tony that should have been in your petty of the week. Um, being oh, told, Dom. yeah. The, the, well, Santos as well, because mm-hmm. being told, man, keep your guys out of this match. Stipulation is Legado del Fantasma cannot cannot come out. LWO cannot come out. And so Santos is like, oh, who else hates this guy? <laughs> Dom. And so Dom coming out made sense. But this also leads me to believe that we're probably getting Dom versus Andrade at WrestleMania. Because I, um... I think that all of this stuff of him potentially jo- joining Judgment Day as a red herring, I think now that he's put himself on the other side of LWO people and Selena's part of the LWO, Andrade is going to feud with Dom. Mm, that's pretty smart. I can see it. I was yeah. just like, I don't, why is Dom, well, I like, they're not doing Dom and Ray again at WrestleMania. I was very confused for a second there. Unless we're getting this big multi man match where it's Andrade and LWO versus Legato, Del Fantasma, and Dom. Um, I, but I, I feel like in some way we're getting Andrade Dom, mm-hmm. even if it's a part of that match. Yeah, I can see it. But yeah, the, the damage control stuff was fine. The, the, the getting to whatever the tag match is, whatever. But mm-hmm. yeah, really the biggest talking point for SmackDown is what can Cody and Roman carry a segment without Rock? And they did pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's still not the same feeling we usually get from Roman segments, but. They still got to figure whoever is doing uh timing and 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 show is they got to figure it. I was like, they're about to start this segment with 30 minutes left, and like, why, what are you doing? And like, 15 minutes of it is just entrances. It's like, you guys, get it together. What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, it's wasting time. Yeah, uh, do we have any more super chats where we nah, slide up out of here? That's it. Appreciate y'all. Let me double check and see if we have any more Humper Chats. Appreciate you guys as always. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to be at uh, West Coast Pro Wrestling. I'm about to take off there in a little bit. If you guys are in the area, really big show tonight. Main evented by Starboard Charlie taking on Kevin Blackwood for the West Coast Pro Championship. Uh, future WWE Hall of Famer Bull Nakano is going to be in the building. Medusa is going to be there. Bunch of great wrestling. If you want to see some West Coast Pro shit tonight, check it out. Sounds like it's going to be a fire show. I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to try to get yeah. Bull phone number. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to, you guys. I thought you were about to say you are going to try and get an interview. You went in a completely different direction. Yeah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> completely different direction. Uh, <laughs> we do not have any more Humper Chats. Appreciate you guys as always. Um, Appreciate you guys for hanging in, for us geeking over rap talk. Appreciate you guys for hanging in, for us doing the wrestle talk as well. Uh, speaking of, I just recorded with wrestle talk. I'm going to be on survival series coming up. Hey, yeah. That I was told going in, I was like, man, I don't know how well I'm going to do with this, and I was told, well, the bar is here because Reg was on here. I was like, <laughs> what happened? The bar was in hell. <laughs> They gave me the worst. I can't. I don't know. What was your What was your question? My thing was name elimination chamber winners, and I was like, "Bro, I don't." Fuck that. Yeah, I probably would have been. <laughs> what did you get? Um, I think it was uh every world title match from WrestleMania. So oh, see, count- I could I could do that. Like that's it, it, it counted all the WWE championship, all the world. Uh, the, well, the universal championship matches and then the women's matches as well oh okay that start to get muddy but i it, could it was hard like the but, first 15 16 years with world title matches yeah mine's is way hard yeah um yeah i don't know when that comes out but i recorded that this weekend this week uh got other stuff coming up wrestlemania weekend is quickly approaching that's uh, all I, all my life these last couple of weeks is just getting prepared for philly pretty much so <laughs> yeah almost ready it's almost here it's like two weeks now what two weeks two weeks Mm -hmm. two weeks (laughs) 
I hope people yeah. know what that's a reference to. If Will was here, he would know what that's a reference to. <laughs> yeah, but if y'all see us out there, definitely show some love. It's going to be a great time. Of course, uh, appreciate everybody for showing up and listening to us talk for three plus hours on a Saturday. Y'all are amazing. Yeah, appreciate you as always. Thank you for your super chats, humper chats. If you do want to get Fightful, mer- I mean, Fightful, Rhapsody merch, link is in our bio. Not that kind of link in the bio. We're no. promise you, we are not bots. We're not just sophisticated Google bots yes. talking to you about things. Um, <laughs> but, man, you know what it is. This has been Grapsity. I'm Phil Lindsay, Righteous Reg. We are out of here. Peace. <laughs>